Hello, hello, hello! What's up tonight, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Tuesday evening to you all. Good to see ya, good to see ya, good to see ya. What is up, Beer Man, Beer Man? Revent Bacon Mission Art, Bailey Gaming Cyberkicks, Old Ben Blue Liger, Tinnabus A Hox A. <laughs> H Ajax Cricket, Worst Boy, Lucas Dono, Colin Clock, North Korea, Korea, Best Korea, Hot Stuffing, Michelin Art, Razortooth, Metchbergen, Young Frilgo, welcome to the Fishbowl, thank you for your subscription, Big Soup's here for our new subscriber, Dr. Jables Canola Scope. <laughs> Happy Tom! How is everyone this fine evening? I am hyped. I'm excited. It's been a while since we've had a modern stream. I think the last two weeks we played mono standard on Arena. So tonight we're switching it up. We're playing some modern, and I'm excited for this deck. We're making lots of mana. We're doing some big crazy things. So with like a pseudo combo kill with Tooth and Nail, it's going to be fun. I'm excited to try this out. Rekindled Soul for the seventh month in a row. W welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big super here for our new subscriber plus all day we've been getting spoilers for ultimate masters and good god ultimate masters is absolutely insane oh my goodness that's that and yes i know like i did the video about ultimate masters the spoilers today and people still have a bad taste in their mouth about this that and i completely agree and understand the msrp increasing but the way i see it like yes i wish they didn't raise msrp but I would much rather have this set at 335 MSRP, like as far as me buying a box, than have Iconic Masters at 240 MSRP. Like I think even with the price increase, this is a really solid set. So I wish that they didn't increase the price. Like I definitely agree there, but I still think this set is just absolutely off the charts insane. What's up, Body Bago? How are you? Dan Wildfire talked with a couple of Wizards employees. They said, shouldn't worry too much about Winner of Teferi. Apparently, there's some spice in the other guilds to keep Azurius non-second nonsense in check. Oh, that's good. Well, maybe we'll get some sweet Planeswalker removal or, like, Pithy Needle effects. I'm a little worried. If you look at the last GP results, while there were only two Jeskai controls in the top eight, there were a lot in the top 32, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, is 315 for a box from my LGS worth it? Oh, that's a that's tough. That is really tough. Um, I'm definitely want to support my LGS if I can. Right now online they're like 265 ish. Last I looked, so you could potentially get them for like 50 dollars cheaper. I don't know where that line is. Like, I think a lot of times it's worth it to pay a little more for your local game store to, like, have a p place to play and support them. $50 more in a box, I think that's, depending on your personal, like, that's that's a choice you will have to make. I think I would probably not pay 50 extra dollars for my local game store personally. But I don't have a local game store that I go to on a regular basis. If I had a local game store that I really loved and wanted to support, then I might. But, NDSE, welcome to the fishbowl. 280-ish, on the other hand, I would definitely consider, with it being like 265 online, 280 at my LGS, I would snap off my LGS box at 280 compared to 265. Oh, I mean, if you get it for 250, that's great. If your local game store is selling it for like 270 or less, you might as well just do that. But welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Cobb507, welcome you as well. Big Scoops here for our new subscribers. I've been keeping up on uh, the the EV of the set, and it really looks like, even with prices coming down and dropping, it really looks like it's at least like 400-ish dollars right now, and that's not even including the box topper, it's it's really insane. Jeez, in Brazil, 380, 383, uh, I don't know if I'd pay 383. Hey, happy birthday, Orin's Constellation, how are you? What video editing software do I use? I uh, use Lightworks, which is functional, but if you talk to professional video, ed uh, video editors, apparently not very good. Anyway, we are playing Modern tonight. We should probably talk about this deck, get into our league, do our reminders. Then we could talk Ultimate Masters. Uh, there's a giveaway tonight. We have Ridge Wallet giveaway after round number three of our league. Ridge Wallet giveaway, you just got to be in the chat and be active when it's time for the giveaway, and you could win a Ridge Wallet it can only ship it uh, North America but if you win and you are from someplace else I'll hook you up uh, with some sweet goldfish merch as someone who works at LGS 
uh, we're only buying a couple boxes because of the price. We can't afford to, uh, afford to buy much more. I actually have heard that's a weird thing with Ultimate Masters is the timing of it is apparently really bad for local game stores. Something about, like, taxes, and if you buy a lot of them, your taxes... I, I didn't completely get the details, but there was some reason why it was sp uh, especially risky for LGSs to buy a bunch of boxes right now. We are just starting, uh, Renona. Anyway, all right, let's do our reminders, talk about this deck, start playing some magic. So first off, replay YouTube. Oh, wait, where am I typing? <laughs> I think I was typing on Magic Online. Replay YouTube, that's where you can find all the old streams, including this stream, in the future. Normal YouTube, if you missed it, last night we played some sweet Artifact Blast Affinity, an ultra-budget Affinity deck for modern on budget magic, and the deck was super sweet. So if you missed that, you should definitely check it out if you're looking for some ultra-budget aggro action for modern. Also, against the odds, Force Fruition, oh my god, why did I put Force Fruition on the poll? <laughs> I think the deck turned out pretty sweet. It turned out pretty sweet, but that is a hard card to build around. I was I was really struggling to figure out how to make Force Fruition work, but I'm reasonably happy with how it turned out. So that's coming out tomorrow. Free to play fish in the meantime. Of course, the sponsor of tonight's stream, who is also doing the giveaway after round three, is Ridge Wallet, and they make super slim front pocket wallets out of carbon fiber and titanium. Check them out at RidgeWallet.com. Get 10% off with a cold goldfish. So thank you to them. Finally, merch page. We got tokens, t-shirts, playmats, a great way to support the stream and the channel and the site. And finally, donations. Always appreciated. Definitely not required. $2 or more gets your message read on stream. And with our reminders out of the way. Oh yes, one last reminder. I almost forgot. Uh, Thursday. So our next scheduled stream I will not be here. It is Thanksgiving over here in the U.S., which means I have to do turkey eating family stuff. So I won't be here on Thursday. So no stream on uh, Thursday, but we will be back to normal next week. So, uh, yes, if I'm not here Thursday, you know why. Uh, that's that's what happened. Anyway, let's talk about... Is there a big stream delay tonight? It should be It should be the same as always, I believe. Dayante, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. So let's talk about this deck. Tonight we are heading to Modern to play Tooth and Nail, which is basically a, uh, a tempo chat. Welcome to the fishbowl. What's up, Blood Stasis? Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. Uh, so this deck, we are built around Tooth and Nail. We're basically a ramp deck. We're kind of like a blue-green ramp deck, essentially, that has some spicy combo potential. So the plan of this deck is really simple. In the early games, we have a ton of ramp. In fact, if you look at this deck, let's move these cards over here. Arbor Elf ramps. We have all these ramp enchantments to put on our lands that we can untap with Arbor Elf. We even have Kiora's Follower as an additional untapper for those lands. So we're trying to make tons of mana really quickly. Garrick also lets us untap lands and give me a finisher. Uh, Kiora, also a land untapper. So really, all of these cards are ramp spells. And we want to get a land down, get some enchantments on it, tap it, untap it, make a ton of mana really, really quickly. Razortooth MTG, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. Yeah, we've never played Tooth and Nail before. What's up, Zyre? How are you? And the dead not sleeping. Good to see ya. So we do all this ramping, and what's our payoff for this ramping? So let's start with the big one. The big big payoff is Tooth and Nail. So Tooth and Nail is this weird old card from Mirrodin with Entwine. So if we could cast Tooth and Nail for 9 mana, Chris and Dragon Rith, almost with the 1 year and 14 month resub. Thank you so much everyone. So many subs tonight. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So if we can cast Tooth and Nail with 9 mana to Entwine it, we get to search our library for 2 creatures, put them in our hand, and then put two creatures from our hand on the battlefield. So we basically tutor two creatures directly from our deck onto the battlefield. And the combo kill, which is the most common thing we'll get with Tooth and Nail, is our one copy of Emrakul and our one copy of Xenagos, God of Revels. So uh, you know what Emrakul does? It is big. It is annihilating. Rafa for the 17th month in a row. And 
Evan Fried, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for our new subscriber. And also hello to Zyre's friend John. Good to see you. Thank you for uh, hanging out tonight. So, uh, so if we can get an Emrakul in a Xenagos, Emrakul is going to be hasty because of Xenagos, and it doubles its power and toughness. So we will have a 30-30 hasty Emrakul to just smash in and theoretically kill our opponent on the spot. Otherwise, we annihilate the board, they chump block or whatever. We do it again the next turn. So that's kind of the combo plan. Ramp, tooth and nail. Otherwise, we get a lot of sweet stuff. Tireless Dragger draws us cards. Great card advantage engine for the deck. Hornet Queen can be a backup tutor target, clogging up the board. Walking Ballista is a backup win condition. We can just ramp a ton and cast a huge Ballista and hit our opponent that way. Nissa kind of untaps lands, actually, and is another backup win condition. We can just go beat down with our lands with our Planeswalkers. Primeval Titan for more land tutoring. And then Primal Command can tutor up creatures, can also just do a bunch of weird stuff, mess with our opponent's lands, putting them back on their deck, gaining us life, and then Eternal Witness can kind of loop. Like, with Primal Command, we get to choose two modes. So we can put a land on top of our opponent's deck, tutor up an Eternal Witness, then cast Eternal Witness to get back Primal Command, put the land back on top of our opponent's deck. So if we start doing that on, like, turn two, for example, gonna be really hard for a lot of decks to keep up with. Skyworthy! Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Besaju does seem like a, a good idea. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. As far as the sideboard, we get a lot of silver bullets. So, a Tarka to deal with creatures. Rurik Thar is our answer for decks like Storm and decks like Eggs. Wormcoil to gain us life. Obstinate Bailoth to fight through discard. Chameleon Colossus to deal with black decks. Creepy Corrosion for artifact decks. Crumbling, uh, Crumble to Dust for Tron. Oozes for Graveyard and Life Gain. Ancient Grudge, Nature's Claim for artifacts and enchantments. Negate to force through our big tooth and nails lightning bolts for removal and that's our deck for tonight we are tooth and nailing that's the plan super quick ramp kind of combo kill and uh we'll see what happens what's up bloody scythe how are you besage you all right besage you do we want to besage you i mean i guess i have a besage you all right we'll play we'll play one besage you uh we will take out we have a lot of fetches do we have too many we have a lot of forests too one two Three, four, hmm. I guess we can just cut a forest. Actually, three breeding pools is pretty excessive. We probably don't need three breeding pools. Do we? We only have like five. All right, let's go down to two breeding pools. Bring, well, bring in the Besaju. That's a good suggestion. All right, let's give it a shot, see how this deck works. Ooh, Forest Walk. That's a good call. I hadn't thought about that. Super hype for ultimate masters, like foil. Oh man, don't get me started on foil. Don't get me started on foil. We did get a ton of sweet pauper reprints. I think that foil is going to break the format or be good enough that it's going to cause changes. Like, I really think that, I think that Gush is going to get banned. I think it is. I think foil is too good with Gush. And I think Gush is like already arguably too good. So I would not be surprised to see Gush get banned shortly. Cure's Follower. The upside of Cure's Follower is, since we're already playing blue mana, but the upside is it lets us untap creatures. <laughs> so we can get spicy and, like, untap a blocker if we really want to. Um, yes, U-R-G. There we go. All right, it's tooth and nail time. 12 months of subscription and counting. Oh, Jonathan Stowe, did I miss a sub? I'm so sorry. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for the one-year resub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. And Kwans, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Everyone asked when I'm playing at the Pro Tour in February. I said I don't know because there isn't great ramp strategy in standard. Help me, Saffron Olive. Uh, wait. Has it been confirmed that that Pro Tour is standard? I actually think that my guess is the February Pro Tour is going to be modern. I don't think... I have not heard that it's confirmed, but my guess is it's going to be modern. Trans Joe, welcome to the Fishbowl. And Airborne, welcome you as well. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. That's a Pro Tour I think I'm going to. I mean, I'm not qualified. I'm not, not playing in it, but I'm hoping... Because it's in Cleveland, and I'm actually... I can drive to Cleveland in, like, probably four hours or something. For me, I can get to Cleveland in probably the same amount of time it takes me to get to New York City, roughly. So I think I might just... Uh, I might just go to the pro tour now that it's a magic weekend the london pro tour is modern 
Wait, isn't isn't the February Pro Tour in Cleveland? Am I confusing two different things? John Popanis and Rayman, welcome to the fishbowl. An awesome dude for the 26th month in a row. I'm great grateful to have you here. Yes, we still need to we still need to Fortnite or PUBG. Fortnite is very difficult to get into as a beginner. Awesome to see you, awesome dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for the for all the subs tonight. It has been a sub a sub train. Since spoilers are so far have been tasty and not everything has been spoiled, what do you most want reprinted and why? Ugh. I think we've seen most of the good stuff. That's my guess. Ooh. This hand. All right. I mean, we have no payoffs, but we have an absurd amount of ramp. Turn one, Utopia Sprawl. Turn two, Overgrowth. Or Kiora's follower, actually. Like, we can ramp like crazy. We just need... We need a payoff. We need to find a payoff. And also, I need to get uh, our Ridge Wallet. <laughs> our Ridge Wallet uh, overlay in the right place. More subs. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Almost. There we go. Oh, stream mode, too. Oh, I'm forgetting... Wait, let me grab these subs first. The subs keep coming. Thank you so much. Kitmer, Red Life Forever. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for our new subscriber. Uh, All right, stream mode. Stream mode achieved. Almost. Also, I got a new chair. <laughs> we got there. And our opponent mold to four, which I assume works in our favor. Let's just Utopia Sprawl on green... Pass the turn. Tireless Tracker would be sweet. How do you think Mill is positioned in the modern meta right now? Going to play a GP in two weeks. Um, <coughs> Mill, I don't think it's necessarily bad. Maybe you get a little bit of a bonus from people playing, like, Dredge and milling themselves, or, like, Vengevine decks with Stitcher Supplier. So I don't think it's particularly poorly placed. Also... Emrakul decks are not really a, a major thing at the moment, so I'm going to go with Mill being in a fine place, although it's still, I mean, it's not like a, a tier one deck or anything, as far as I, as far as I can tell. It's fine, but not, not insane. All right, Kiora's follower, go. Better to play the creature first so it's unsummoning sick, and then we can untap this forest. Foil, yeah, so Foil is a three for, oh no. This is a deck that we could, we could lose to with four cards in hand. Oh boy, come on deck. We need a top deck. Serum Visions, if we, we're gonna lose to, oh no. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, nightmares. They mulled to four and I feel like they're probably gonna beat us. We really want Primal Command, I think. Arbor Elf. Well, you can never have too much mana. <laughs> if we draw a tooth and nail next turn, we should just win. Uh, all right, overgrowth, untap, arbor elf. We have literally infinite mana. <laughs> infinite, infinite, infinite. Come on, tooth and nail before we're dead. So as a three for one, I don't think foil is good if you play it fairly, but a lot of the blue decks in Pauper are already playing Gush, which is picking up useless lands and drawing cards. So because Gush is so heavily played, and because Foil interacts so well with Gush, I think that it's going to be good for that reason. Ooh, Stoneforge. That would be a spicy reprint, even though it's not modern legal. Hey, what's up, White Lotus? How are you? Do you think the normal rule for buying UMA, uh, buying UMA singles changes the way Ultimate Master is going to work, or is usually one or two months after the release? Uh, I still think it'll be roughly the same. I think the best time to buy it will be will be starting like a month after the set releases, and usually lasts for several months after that. Oh my! <sighs> wow, and it goes. Oh my God. Well, our opponent's out of action. Oh, man. All right, come on, Tooth and Nail. Come on, Tooth and Nail. We're going to thin our deck here. They didn't Ghost Quarter us. Their last card is a land. All right. All right. We could almost just hard cast Emrakul. Tooth and Nail. Tooth and Nail. <gasps> I got him. We got him. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! Uh, I say we entwine this. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay. Uh, Emrakul, Xenagos. I think we'll put Emrakul and Xenagos into play. <laughs> Hello, Avulet Bloom. Well, uh, opponent scoops it up. They know what's coming, and what's coming is not good for them. All right, the magic gods have smiled upon us at a very perfect time. Crizonis, for the second month in a row, really like six months, but didn't realize it dropped for a month or so. Well, I'll give you credit for six months. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoop cheer for our new subscriber. Whew, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I mean, I could still complain in the future, but no complaining for this match, at least. Uh, actually, how do we fight this deck? <laughs> what, do we have anything that's good against what our opponent's doing? I guess, like, uh, Ancient Grudge deals with Amulet. Nature's Claim deals with Amulet. Creeping Corrosion, I think, no, we don't want that. What about Rurikthar? That probably doesn't do enough. They got all lands. Worm Coil doesn't really do anything. Crumble? I guess Crumble on a bounce land could slow our opponent down. Engineered Fun! Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Definitely plan on doing some UMA drafts. The draft format looks super fun. Should we be bringing in Negate? That's a good question. Uh, what are we cutting is also a good question. Hmm, I like Primal Command. That's kind of a an evergreen answer. We can go down. We can probably cut, like, Nyssa, maybe. Nyssa's probably the worst of our Planeswalkers. We can go down. Oh, we have Mismatch Birds? Ugh. I think we can cut the Birds. Arbor Elf, Cure's Follower. Something like that. Do we want the Negates? Negates over Ballista. Hmm. Ballista's kind of removal, though. I guess that's the other thing. Should we be bringing in lightning bolts to kill their... To kill their things? When you go to Cleveland, you should get a gr uh, grilled cheese at Melt. Ooh, I do like grilled cheese. And I've never had one at Melt. <laughs> we gotta get rid of those mismatched birds. It's gonna drive me crazy. Actually, Hornet Queen... Hornet Queen is probably... I think Ballista is better than Hornet Queen. Hornet Queen is better against decks with a bunch of creatures where it gets to gum up the board. I'm not sure that Negate is good enough. Lightning Bolt seems reasonable. Alright, we'll go one We'll go one Bolt, one Negate. We'll split the difference. We'll split the difference. I used to run a version of this deck was fun times. So far, it's been fun. I mean, we've only played one game, but... Ooh, we have a new donation! Our first donation of the night from Conoscope. Hey, Seth, my boyfriend is going to GP Warsaw this weekend, and it's his first time judging the main event. Could I ask for a good luck and safe travel shout-out to Miles, please? Well, thank you so much for the donation, Conoscope. And... Good luck, Miles. That's super exciting. First time judging a main event at a GP. I don't think I would be able to judge. I don't think I know. <laughs> I play so much Magic, but I don't think I know the Magic rules well enough that I, I would feel comfortable judging. So, awesome, Miles. We need more good judges. So, safe travels and uh, have fun. And thank you so much for the donation, Canoscope. Zoltan Zorin, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Uh, yes, Ultimate Masters box opening is on my to-do list. I believe uh, we will definitely be doing at least one. I'm tempted to just buy a case for myself, and if I buy a case for myself, we might get multiple box openings, because, eh, I mean, why not open them on camera if that's what I'm going to do anyway? But we'll see. We'll see how many I, I actually end up buying. Wins of Death, crack it. Grab a... This is actually awkward. Hmm. I guess we gotta take blue for Kiora's follower, even though it means we don't get to Lightning Bolt. So let's Breeding Pool, Arbor Elf. Pass the turn. Going to Pax Unplugged to play some Ultimate Masters. Uh, I'm not, although it would be... It would be awesome. Gruel Turf. Uh, now I kind of wish we had red mana. Opponent. Let's just draw Fetch Land. Fetch Land would be sweet. Fetch Land, kill the scout, play follower. Alright, well, we're doing it. 
We're doing it the hard way. The very hard way. Kiora's follower. Pass the turn. Uh-oh. Getting scared. Have you already selected a winner for the Renaissance Booster Box opening giveaway? Not yet. I think it goes for a week, I'm pretty sure. So that would be this Friday. But we're not there uh, We're not there yet. Let me see MTG gear. But you should definitely open, uh, enter on the YouTube channel if you have not already. Enter to win the box. It was a really sweet box to open. Opponent making more plants. Passing more turns. And Besaju is a little awkward. Well, tap. <sighs> Untap. <laughs> tap. We could untap Arbor Elf to untap Besaju or Breeding Pool. <laughs> Let's not get too too tricky. Breeding Pool. Overgrowth. Please no Ghost Quarters. Besage you. Pass the turn. No death. No death, please. No death. Rocky Arg. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. That one's on you, chat. That one's on you. Y'all are the ones that said I had one besage you. So if we lose because of besage you, <laughs> I'm blaming you. I'm blaming you, chat. <laughs> uh, murmuring visitation. Ooh, that's spicy. Phone it. Oh dear, going off, Azusa. Are we dead? They don't have an amulet, so we're probably not just dead. Colony Garden. Okay. Wait, do we win this turn? Do we win? Opponent empties their hand. One. So we play. We play Overgrowth. Oh, we have. We just have Tooth and Nail for the win. Murmuring Visitation, spicy. Opponents just, they're de developing their stuff, but I think they're dead. I guess they could have Pact to Negation. Opponent passes. Hey, what's up, uh, Rocky Arg? We draw, f oh, we draw a forest. Well, that's even better. Now we get to... Overgrowth. On our breeding pool. This thing's tapping for so much mana. Untap it. Tap it. Untap it. Tap it. Tap it. Uncounterably entwined tooth and nail. <laughs> no pact of negation, no problem. <laughs> Pona made a bunch of plants and uh, we're just going to do the boring thing. Emrakul, Xenagos. Emrakul, Xenagos. And our opponent. <laughs> well, alright. Let's play. We might as well play another Overgrowth if they haven't conceded. And opponent scoops it up! <laughs> oh, ran him over. Unshaven Drake for the third month in a row. Well, off to a good start with with uh, Tooth and Nail. Man, we just smashed Amulet Titan. They did mulligan a lot, but... Already three months, time flies. Could you take one last look at my latest commander deck? And could you give a shout out to my buddy Joris? Bi both big fans of your work. Keep it up. Well, thank you so much for the resub. And hello to Joris. Uh, yeah, send me a link to your commander deck. Oh, I see it there, Unshaven Drake. Well, that was pretty excellent. That was pretty much exactly what we were hoping this deck would do. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, good start. Good start for, for Tooth and Nail. Uh, apparently a hasty 30-30 Emrakuls. Pretty good. Even in modern. A powerful format like modern. Uh, I mean, we can cast them, but... I believe MTG is about discovering new decks and finding cool new combos. Uh, that is that is pretty much uh, what I enjoy about MTG as well. So the Murmuring Visitation deck definitely looks spicy. I've been working on quasi Duplidrake. Drake. <laughs> With Murmuring Mystics and Quasi-Duplicates and Crackling Drake. It definitely looks fun. I mean, if you can get down a Mystic and a Divine Visitation, you can make a lot of Angels pretty quickly. Definitely spicy. Reeky Storm. Good lord. Is this Mono Green... Mono Green Legend Storm. That looks super sweet, Unshaven Drake. <laughs> That's super sweet. Who's going to win the World Championship of Chess? Uh, isn't it just going to be a draw? Has anyone even won a game yet? <laughs> last, I, last I checked, they have drawn every game. <laughs> so no one? 
<laughs> Gotta do a stream with the quasi duplicate rake deck for the name alone. Yeah, that, I mean, quasi duplicate, it's definitely the new panharmonic god because that's a very panharmonic. Ugh. Ugh. Beseju. Who said Beseju? I want names. Who was it, chat? <laughs> yeah, all right. We would add to Mulligan that one anyway. We have all expensive stuff, no ramp. Well, this isn't great. Primal Command, we really need ramp. We just need ramp. That's the long and short of it. Opponent, Crack and Misty. Do you think Wizards is good in modern? Um, I think Wizards is is reasonable, yes. I don't know if I would say Wizards is uh, tier one, but it's a solid, like, tier two deck at least. Psychologist for the 26th month in a row. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Oh, no. Are we getting comboed? Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. Overgrowth. Well, wind swept teeth go. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. If our opponent could just go infinite here, none of this matters, and we're super dead. Come on, no viziers. No viziers. Untaps it. Temple Garden. Untapped. Oh! No! <laughs> oh, modern. Modern, modern, modern. Oh, good God. Okay, so opponent has infinite mana. I guess we gotta make him show us a payoff. Well, we're dead on turn three. <laughs> Was listening to the Professor Vitz talk about modern, and they were saying it's how it's in a crisis because of the number of degenerate decks. What are your thoughts? Uh, okay, opponent wins. Uh, Duskwatch. I... Uh, Duskwatch means they draw their whole deck, and they will win eventually, so there's no reason. Well, that was a quick one. That game took 1 minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> oh, God. Well, okay. We were trying to Emrakul them, and they just did even more unfair things. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. Okay. Well, that was brutal. That is a kill. So I think Modern is pretty unfair at the moment. I would like to see some of the most unfair decks like dredge so what happens i think in modern is you have a deck like dredge that becomes really powerful for whatever reason in this case like creeping chill uh or a deck like kci the eggs deck that becomes really powerful and because we don't have like force of will type effects in modern the uh, just catch all answer effects the way to try to compete with the really busted decks uh, you can't be like okay I'm gonna play control and stop every unfair thing uh, instead you're like all right I just got to be even more unfair like if you're gonna kill me on turn three with dredge or turn four with dredge I'm gonna try to kill you on turn three with whatever combo I can play and then it just spirals out of control until everyone is playing the most degenerate thing uh, degenerate thing possible so I think we're in one of those loops in modern right now but uh but yeah uh, so I don't know I would like to see some small changes I don't think we need like a huge massive overhaul but I wouldn't mind seeing like dredge or KCI uh, maybe maybe but probably not storm but some of the most egregious turn three kill decks uh be knocked down a peg or two Tron is, yeah, Tron is another one. Tron has that turn three clock that does basically the same thing. So let's bring in lightning bolts. Go down the two birds of paradises. Uh, negate feels weird, but it might be worth it. Atarka seems good. Maybe we go Atarka for Hornet Queen. I don't think just gaining life is great. Negate does stop Court of Calling Collected Company. It might be worth it just for that. Although, our opponent could definitely just kill us with creatures. That's another possibility. Let's go down the Nyssa for a negate. Um, Alright, we'll go down Tireless Tracker for negate as well. Alright, let's, let's write it like that. Hey, I'm doing well, Stoplight Man. How are you? I've taken over... I have taken Hoogland's Blue Red Wizard deck to 2G plays, played several events. Overall, I'm 10 and 5 with the deck and played against numerous tier 1 decks. Yeah, I mean, the Wizard deck is definitely powerful. It definitely is. All right, we get to play first. Beseju. Beseju. 
Maybe there was a reason the person that built this deck didn't play Besaju. Ooh, all right. Well, this I like. We can't interact with what our opponent's doing, but we have Utopia Sprawl into Overgrowth, into Garrick, into Primeval Titan. Okay. Uh, sure. We'll keep that. Get all the lads, get all the lads. Hey, Seth, had to step away for a minute and eat dinner. How did the second game of the first match go? What did I miss? Uh, we kind of just smashed our opponent. They mulliganed again, and we had a, another turn four Emrakul. Utopia Sprawl on green. Pass the turn. Stifling of Fetch is pretty sweet. Opponent, Crack and Missy. On the other hand, if our opponent just has the natural combo, there's not, not a whole lot we can do to stop it. Birds of Paradise. Well, Breeding Pool untapped, run out, Overgrowth. Pass the turn. Come on, no comp. Oh, devoted Druid. Are they just doing this again? Xenagos. Oh, play Garrick. Tap, untap. Play Primeval Titan. I mean, we got a turn three Primeval Titan, and I'm not sure we're winning. <laughs> I'm really not. Let's take... Um... Kessig Wolf Run. Ugh. Nykthos makes a lot of mana. What do we want here? Do you got, uh, did you ever play Guilds of Ravnica Block Constructed on Arena? If so, did you play? I did not get to play any of the Block Constructed matches. So I, I didn't actually get to do that. When is the next installment of Deconstructed going out? Uh, I believe it should be out this Friday. I'm pretty sure. Probably should have held it in the gate. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. They could just naturally have it as well. So I think we're going to go... Uh, if we get Wolf Run... Six, Xenagos. Do we win with Wolf Run? I guess we probably do. Let's go Wooded Foothills, Wolf Run. And pass the turn. Hope that we are not dead. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I see the Discord. I have to I have to turn off notifications when I'm streaming, Richard, because <laughs> Oh my god, they just have it. I have to turn off notifications because they just it beeps incessantly if uh if I don't turn it off. But I see the Discord. I got it. <laughs> and now we're dead. Oh, well, this is gonna be a fast league. Man, see this is uh, in some sense. It's our deck's fault, because we're not playing interaction. So we are also trying to goldfish to the kill. But we just died on turn three twice to to a really... <sighs> Why, Wizards? Why? <laughs> Why? Why do you make modern like this? <sighs> it's a little unfortunate that our opponent just, like, three-card combo and they had it on turn three two games in a row like they do need three pieces to combo off but oh lordy 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 all right well that was rough hmm all right well this is gonna be a quick league win or lose win or lose it's going to uh going to be quick apparently <sighs> So what do you want to, what's your feelings on Modern? Like, where are you, we're getting a ton of Ultimate Master stuff. So Modern is getting a lot of support. What are, uh, what are your feelings? Like, are you happy with it? Do you think things should change? If things need to be changed, uh, what changes would you... What changes would you make to Modern? Also, uh, we have... 
a pretty sweet sale going on for Black Friday through Cyber Monday uh, over at the merch store. 20% off of all $30 plus orders over at mtggoldfishmerch.com from now through Cyber Monday. And this is just being announced. You can use the code THANKS20 over at the merch store to get uh, 20% off. And you are the first to hear about it. So as a loyal stream viewer, a Fishbowl member, you get first crack at the sale. So head over to the merch store. Use the code THANKS20 to uh, get uh, 20% off through Cyber Monday. So yeah, (laughs) that had nothing to do with Discord. (laughs) <laughs> that was just a coincidence that wizards came in that that richard came in and told me to check my discord and then there was a sale announced unrelated we were talking about something completely different his jund deck we were he needed some advice on junding people out <laughs> uh i consider you all loyal fishbowl members i mean <laughs> that probably wasn't the best term. You're hearing about it first. It's open to anyone, but this is the first announcement of it. So you get the first crack at the sale. Unbanned Pondered Preordained Repent Counterspell. Counterspell, I think, would be in modern if it didn't have to go through standard. I mean, I guess the good news is if this league ends in an hour, we get to uh, we get to play two leagues or something else, so... But you are considered loyal, so not a replica. Uh, this hand. I mean, this hand's fine. Ramp, ramp. Nissa, Hornet Queen. I mean, it doesn't stop us from being dead on turn three. Maybe we gotta play something that makes us not die on turn three. There's a sale over on the merch page, mtggoldfishmerch.com. 20% off through Cyber Monday with the code THANKS20. Uh, we have main deck, Paseju, who shelter, shelters all. Are we about to get stormed? Maybe. Maybe stormed. Opponents playing the brand new Steam Vents. With little steam or vents. Tisk tisk. <laughs> uh, uh, passes. Now, well, Forest, Utopia's Brawl. On, and I guess just green. Pass the turn. Bonnet. Kills us. <laughs> Lab Honored be Degenerate. New non rotating format incoming. Thing in the ice. Okay. I don't know if this is good or bad. We draw. Kiora's follower. Well, what did Foothills crack it? Grab a breeding pool. Untapped. Run out. Kiora's follower. Run out Birds of Paradise. Pass the turn. I mean, we can play in this next turn. Everything's going to get bounced by Thing in the ice, but. Uh, this could be an Arclay Phoenix deck. There's a couple different thing in the ice build. Some with Phoenix, some without Phoenix. What do you think of a small new set that has cards reprints for Modern Legacy and Vintage? That way cards can be printed without messing up standard. I've been wanting that for a long time. I'm actually hopeful that now that Masters sets are ending, at least for the time being, I'm hopeful that we're actually going to see that. That's what I want to see. A set that is a mixture of reprints and new cards, but is legal and modern. Oh, it would be so awesome. Captain Norvgood. The only downside is, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. I'll get back to that. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. So, uh... The only problem is, Wizards doesn't really do a lot of testing for modern. So, there is a risk... Man, Ponish is going to... Everyone is doing broken things on turn three. And we're doing broken things on turn four. <laughs> Sometimes. Without faith. Oh, there's Arclight Phoenix. Good God. <laughs> we're just going to die on turn three every single, every single, uh, every single game. Voren, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. <laughs> oh, man. 
Turn three death infinite every time. Nonstop. Down to seven. Um Well, now we I guess we do the same thing and start chump blocking. Kiara's follower. Birds of Paradise. Besaju, pass the turn. I think we're dead. Turn three is a new turn four. We just gotta we gotta build a turn two deck, I think. I think that is the solution. We need to play turn two tokens or something. But maybe something slightly more consistent. <laughs> Uh, Modern has some really interesting games, but right now there's a lot of degenerate things happening that lead to just really fast games. Is Ultimate Masters a cash grab before Wizards makes major changes to a post-standard format? Um, so we know that there will be a post-stand or a post-modern post-modern format eventually. That's something that is pretty much guaranteed to happen. At least Mono Blue Mill wasn't picked for the stream. Yeah, that that also that like starts milling a few cards on turn three. <laughs> it seems a little bit slower for the than this deck even. Um, so we are. I'm pretty confident there will be a postmodern format eventually. That's pretty well known. They've already talked about it for Arena. It makes sense that Paper will have it eventually, but I don't really think Wizards is interested in pulling support from modern right now modern is still arguably the most popular format in magic uh maybe standard is right this second because standard has been good the last couple months but overall i think modern is the most popular format and there's a ton of gps scheduled for next year uh in modern so i don't think they're pulling support now eventually i think there will be a postmodern format what that looks like i'm not really sure if it is something where they're supporting both for a while uh not really sure so i think what my guess of what will happen is we'll get a postmodern format on arena and it probably will not be super fun uh for the time being all right block this because we have to because the format will be really small. So it'll be a way you can hopefully keep using your... Good God, this deck. It'll be a way that you can keep using your... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But we gotta... Hmm. Hmm. Well, play Wolf Run. Play Utopia Sprawl. Yeah, play Utopia's Brawl on red. Tap, untap, tap, tap. Play Hornet Queen, which keeps us alive until this thing in the ice flips. Um, so I think that it'll only be moderately fun at first, and then as the format gets bigger and it actually has several or many years of cards in it then i could see it actually becoming a modern like format in paper uh, i don't think it'll be frontier i think it'll be based on the cards that are on arena and from everything we know arena starts quite a bit later than origins like maybe shadows over innistrad would be on it that would be probably the absolute earliest and kaladash is probably a more likely starting point uh, but I don't, I think it'll be based on, on what cards are on Arena rather than what makes the most flavor sense. But I do think that, uh, Origins makes sense from, like, a flavor standpoint. Provinity, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. Uh, are we dead? Hmm. I mean, I guess we just gotta draw a Tooth and Nail. That's our, they have two more Phoenixes. Well, good thing we got got the bees. <laughs> they can block phoenixes, at least temporarily. If we draw tooth and nail, we have a, a shot of just one-shotting. I guess we don't... Yeah. I mean, if we draw tooth and nail here, we can win. MTG MDK! Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Oh, no. Just the same stuff, Feather Hall, about postmodern form mats. Okay. Well, that's going to make it harder to win. 
Kills Kiora's follower. Opponent. I don't know how we beat these things in the ice, though. I guess we just need our opponent to not draw spells ever. N what does Nissa do? Not much. 4-4 four, four, Forest. That doesn't do anything. Opponent attacks. Well, we got a block. Stay at 4. Untap. Draw. Utopia Sprawl. Okay, so we play Nissa. Oh, this doesn't even untap. Oh, okay, we can untap for a forest. All right, all right. So play Nissa. Untap four lands. Or actually, just two. Utopia Sprawl. I mean, we're still dead to our opponent flipping thing in the ice, but. We can't really change that. Arbor Elf. Pass the turn. I mean, pass the turn. Hope our opponent does not have two spells. And hope we top deck a tooth and nail. That's the game. That's the game. Hey, what's up, Donos? Opponent cracks Scalding Tarn. Probably a bad side. And. Oh, dear. All right. Death looks imminent. Serum Visions. <laughs> yup. No spell? No spell? <sighs> no, I mean, the pro we're dead to thing the ice flipping. That's a problem. <laughs> All right. Yep. Bedlam Reveler. Odds of finding a spell. Very high. And spell? It's a spell. Well, that wasn't super close. I guess technically we live till turn six, which is better than dying on turn three. Yeah, I mean, the problem is we're dead immediately before we even untap. That's uh, that's the concern there. Well, our secret plan for this deck is Rurikthar. If we could somehow get down a Rurikthar, our life could be good. That's We don't have any horrors, do we? Man, a horror would be sweet. Uh, we can bring in Scavenging Ooze, I guess, as our graveyard hate. Lightning Bolt does nothing. A Tarka, I guess, could kill a thing in the ice really inefficiently. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Do you think that Hollow One is viable in the current meta? Uh, I mean, I think it's reasonably, reasonably viable. I mean, Modern has a ton of viable decks, and I think Hollow One is definitely on the list. I don't think it's the best deck in Modern like it was six months ago or whenever, but it's still a pretty reasonable a pretty reasonable option. Yeah. Rurikthar is our main plan here. Uh, otherwise, Scavenging Ooze can deal with some of our opponent's stuff. We don't really have a good plan for... Dealing with Thing in the Ice? Huh. Negate does... Uh, Lightning Bolt does nothing. Colossus does nothing. Worm Coil's not especially great. I mean, maybe it's fine just for life gain. Like, maybe Worm Coil is better than, like, random Nyssa. Our Planeswalkers seem like they probably just die to Arclight Phoenixes repeatedly. Which is not, not a great use. Maybe we go down Walking Ballista. Maybe something like that. Colossus is a horror. <laughs> All right. Sold. Sold. <laughs> got him. We got him. <laughs> the horror tech. 
Uh, I played for a different version of your build deck against a Thousand Year Storm deck. Boy, is the bonus end when I build three of the Thousand Year Storms and the last one with my FIFA Sanity. Oh, man. That sounds, that sounds super brutal. Well, we got mana. We're gonna, we're not gonna not keep a handful of mana. We gotta hope we draw into something big. Rurik Thar, Tooth and Nail, that type of stuff. Negate should be in. I don't even know if Negate's that good against this deck. It's all just cantrips. Man, if we can get him with Colossus, that would make me incredibly happy. Bela should be Thrag Tusk. Um, alright. So, let's Forest and Arbor Elf. Pass the turn. Oh, uh, Colossus would be so sweet. Uh, what's with the deck you played a while ago? It was like one of City had Fauna Shaman as a main plan. Oh, um, the Cremator Evolution deck? It might be the Cremator Evolution deck. Do you think Naban Wizards is still playable without Panormonicon in the format? Um, I've seen people playing Naban Wizards as sort of a... is sort of a unique version of... Mono Blue Tempo. So I'm going to say that yes. Although... My guess is normal mono blue tempo is probably the more like spiky version but you can play something similar to mono blue tempo that is naban and wizard base what am i thankful for in mtg oh, blood moon panharmonicon ultimate masters all of you the awesome community <laughs> oh i got a new chair by the way which means the beard cam it's actually a step closer to happening beard cam is gonna be is gonna be a thing I'm a little nervous about it. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> We've never done beard cam for streams before, so we'll see. Oh, also, after this round, I forgot. I said after round three, so even though it's going quickly, after this round, Ridge Wallet giveaway. Have I seen Hoogland's pirate list? I think I saw a quick glimpse of it on Twitter, but I haven't really looked into it. What's missing to make it a thing? Um... Just a, just a slight bit of effort on my end. I'm hope, hoping that next week it will be up and running. I don't think I'm missing much actual equipment, unless I end up doing, like, the green screen background thing, which I don't have. But, uh, but yes, as far as actual equipment, I think I got everything. Uh, I just need to actually set it up. DJ Manamar, Jeffy, Olamari, welcome y'all to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscriptions. Big soups here for our new subscriber. Oh lordy. Well, overgrowth, breeding pool. Where are we on mana? How close are we? This taps for five, six, seven, eight. Uh, kind of close-ish. Unless they have a ghost quarter or a blood... Well, blood Moon doesn't do it. Ghost quarter. Zaro Askin. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Let's get a counter for when you forget you're on camera and do something embarrassing. Oh, man. I think that would probably outpace the punt counter pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm just not used to physically being on camera. It's going to be an adjustment. <laughs> Uh, I think it'll be sweet, though. I think it'll be sweet. If you give me your your old chair, that means I'll have two chairs. Only one more to go. Ooh. Uh, my old chair, I still will probably use it for a backup. It's a little broken. It's, like, tilty, which is why I didn't, <laughs> didn't want to have the tilty beard cam. So I figured I had to actually make sure I got the new chair before we uh, before we did beard cam. Well, if we die really quick, we can probably play some games with uh, Artifact Blast. I think I still have the Artifact Blast deck built. Could try to crush some people. Maybe we try Maybe we try Artifact Blast in a league just for fun. Because those games should go pretty quickly, too. I know I'm afraid I'm going to pick my nose on camera. 
No, if okay, I gotta ask you this: if you've been to college, so it's been a bit since I've been in college. Uh, do you ever? I have this weird nightmare occasionally where I will I will have a nightmare that I like did not turn in a test or something, and it's been several years since I've been at college. So I, you would assume that that would you assume that that would go away eventually. <laughs> uh, I guess I did do. I guess I did do. Uh, okay. Oh, it's a normal thing. All right. <laughs> it's a dream that never. All right. I thought I was like the weirdo, but apparently, apparently, uh, everyone has those dreams. I don't have them as much as I used to. I think it's getting to the point where they're going away. But every once in a while, I'll wake up in a sweat. One time, the worst. I now that I'm doing content, I also occasionally do it with content. Is Richard still here? Hopefully not. If I'm telling this story, well, actually, he knows the story. But <laughs> oh no, two arc lights. I, <laughs> there was one day I did it with content where I woke up in like a cold sweat at like 5 a.m. And I thought I'd forgot to schedule the articles to be published on a Sunday night. So I woke up and published them all. And then uh, it turns out it was actually the wrong day. It was a day early and I had not messed up. So you got all my articles uh, <laughs> a day early. Uh, mine's usually some meeting where they find out that I never officially graduated and get fired as a result. Yeah, that's a good one as well. I graduated college in 97. In the past year, I've had one where I thought, where I found out I'm registered for classes that I haven't attended. Yeah, it's so weird. It is so weird. I just watched your Artifact Plus videos on the stream. It was super sweet. I wish I had Magic Online to pick it up for seven bucks. Yeah, so... Really, I think with the five tickets you get for, well, I think the price has increased a little bit since the video went live, but in theory, you could get a Magic Online account for 10 bucks and then, and then just immediately use the stuff you get in the account to pretty much get the deck. But with the price increase, it's harder. So we have what, five here? Six, seven, eight. So we can't tooth and nail full value. We can tooth and nail and tutor something in hand, but that seems bad. Well, I guess we just play Arbor Elf, play Wooded Foothills, pass the turn, hope our opponent taps out, and then we can get him next turn. I guess that's the plan. Yeah, if they don't have counters and Elf lives, or we draw a land, we can try it. This also is assuming that we live. Man, Arclight Phoenix, way better than... Oh, wow. Bedlam Reveler with four cards still in hand. Oh! <laughs> no way! Oh! Why, Magic Gods? Why have you betrayed us? Their hand was land, two more Arclight Phoenixes, and Fiery Tepper. And they draw three cards. And now they cast spells and get back arc lights and we're dead? Okay, no arc lights. Well, come on, land. Land doesn't even do it, does it? Land might do it. Oh, all right, all right. Land off the top. Land off the top. Primal command. Hmm. 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 One, two, three, four, five. All right, so primal command. Oh, we don't win, right? So we can shuffle their graveyard and gain life. We can also gain life, get a scavenging ooze, and eat a phoenix. So I would get rid of one phoenix and leave a scavenging ooze to potentially chump block a bedlam reveler. So our options with primal command, gain, target player gain seven, non-creature on top of the library, shuffle graveyard into library, search for a creature, put it in your hand. We 
we got to deal with the arc lights, or we're gonna die for sure. The only question is whether we. Uh, so this is three six, seven eight nine lightning bolt. Let's say ten, eleven twelve thirteen. I mean, I guess we're dead to a lot of things anyway. All right, let's just let's just gain seven life. So we gain seven. An opponent shuffles their graveyard in. This is our best our best hope. Alright, pass the turn. Do we have a Finx? We do not have a Finx, unfortunately. I feel like our way to win is draw is to draw land. If we draw land and resolve tooth and nail. Well, draw and resolve. We got a shot. Pony gets in. Down to five. Thing in the ice. We draw land. Oh, oh, fetch land. Well, we got. <laughs> no, we're gonna die to pull. All right, crack one in foothills. <laughs> Get a forest. We gotta try. We gotta try. Do you got a bolt? Get a forest, entwine, please no counters, please no counters. Magic God, smile upon us. No remand? <gasps> All right, uh, Xenagos. They could still be slow rolling the bull, Emergol. Xenagos, Emergol. Yeah, both into play. Xenagos targets Emrakul. Do we get there? Do we sneak it out? Or are we about to die? 30? Hasty? Annihilating? Emrakul? Attack? Did it get there? Fought it? I still have this feeling that they're just going to bolt us. They're going to, like, float a mana, sack their lands, and then bolt us. <laughs> I can't get... It's my new nightmare. I'm going to wake up in a cold sweat at 5 a.m. thinking about lightning bolt with mana floating. Bl Blue... Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soup's here for our new subscriber. I mean, our opponent's just dead, though, because Xenagos doubles the power and toughness, so it's actually a 30-30. So this actually just straight up kills our opponent. Oh, man. We survived. We survived. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness, thanks goodness. Whoo, tooth and nail. We snuck it out somehow. <laughs> Photo said, note to self, keep a phoenix back. <laughs> I guess that is a, a pretty good note. Uh, so after this game, win or lose, Ridge Wallet giveaway. So get ready for that. Get ready for that if you're interested in winning a super sweet Ridge Wallet. Um, huh. Should we be bringing in the gates? Free things are pretty nice, and ridge wallets are also pretty nice. So a free ridge wallet is like doubly nice. <laughs> uh, all right, what are we? What are we doing? Are we just running it back? Uh, so I can only ship the ridge wallet in the United States. However, if you are outside of the United States and you are chosen as a winner, I will hook you up with uh, with something from the merch store. Speaking of the merch store, 20% off through Cyber Monday, starting right now with the code THANKS20. So, but yes, if you're outside the US and win, I will hook you up. I will hook you up with some goodies from the merch store and then redraw for the Ridge Wallet. 
Mizzou 232. Goldfish is the best fish. Thank you so much. With a one year resub. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups cheer for our new subscriber. Um I actually don't remember where Entwine is on the storm scale. I assume that it's a ma mechanic that can return. It's essentially like a kicker mechanic, and we see lots of variants on kicker. So uh, without remembering what the storm scale says, I it's a six? Okay, so it's possible. Not likely, but possible. Slightly on the less likely side of average. I mean, I would assume that it would be okay, but... Mara would know better than I would. I would assume just because it reminds me of Kicker and a million other mechanics that are similar to Kicker. Not like this. Why? Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. We have Thousand Year Storm at Standard. So the storm scale, if you've never seen it, you should look it up. It's actually super sweet. The storm scale uh, is made by Mark Rosewater, who's the head designer over at Wizards. And it basically ranks mechanics on how likely they are to return. And uh, it's called the storm scale because storm is the least likely mechanic to return. It's a, it is a 10, which basically means it's not happening. So a one is like basically guaranteed to return. And then fives uh, are... Are, you know they could in the right in the right situation in the right set and then like eight nines and tens those are mechanics that we're probably never going to see again but if you've never seen it before it's really interesting i really loved your duplicate deck having lots of fun with it on arena at the moment oh i really love that deck too i'm working on another one hopefully a budget friendly one quasi dupla drake so we'll see if i get it fig uh, figured out we will hopefully do some quasi dupla draking at some point all right, stopping rounds tapped. No phoenixes in the graveyard yet. That's a bit of a relief. Pass the turn. We have a new subscriber, Old Ben X, with a gift sub. <laughs> the 576th gift sub from Tanos. Thank you so much, Tanos, and uh, welcome to the fishbowl, Old Ben X. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. Yeek. Is Quasi Duplicate my biggest surprise of Guilds of Ravnica? Uh, as far as cards I like to play, yes. I think the card that I... Arclight Phoenix, on paper when it was spoiled, I was very meh on it, although I came around on it very quickly. We had that preview stream on Arena before the set was even out, and I saw someone play it in a Drake stack, and I immediately knew, and I believe I even tweeted about it, that it was very underrated and was actually really good. So that might have been my biggest my biggest miss, although I changed course, but Quasi Duplicate's a card that I just completely didn't think of as playable at all, and now it's one of my favorite cards to play in Standard. Krauser for the seventh month in a row. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Your positively... <laughs> Positivity always amazes me. Your theory of fun being zero-sum is the opposite of mine. Yet you are so kind that I love your content anyway. Keep it coming and have a great Thanksgiving. Well, thank you so much for the resub. And have a great Thanksgiving to you as well. Uh, by the way, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is on Thursday. That means no stream on Thursday. My apologies, but we'll be back on Tuesday. So this is the only, the only official stream of the week because of that. Quasi Duplicate seems like such a fun card to play around. I tried it with Gutter Snipe. Ooh, yeah, that's the Quasi Dupla Drake deck I'm working on. Is it does not have uh, Gutter Snipe, but it is an Is It deck. All right, let's Forest. Uh, see if our opponent has counters. Overgrowth. All right, Is It Charm? Sure. Well, we're basically hoping they don't have Bedlam Reveler. That would be annoying. Spikes Cafe for the 10th month in a row. Thanks for all the great content, Seth. I watch it on my train commute every day. Thank you so much for the kind words in the resub, Spikes Cafe. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Big soups here for our new subscriber. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Quasi-duplicate Biovisionary could be fun. Oh, man, Lab Maniac, downgraded to Uncommon in Ultimate Masters. That's going to be my mission in Ultimate Masters uh, Limited, to win with Laboratory Maniac. I think this set's going to be really fun to draft. When we play CEDH again, um, that's a good question. 
I'm not sure if we'll, we will have another... I think the decks this season have been more competitive than past seasons, but they haven't been truly CEDH decks. So we'll see. We have uh, five-ish episodes left in the season, I think. So I'll see if we can sneak in a, a CEDH. If not, I will try to get to it early in, in Season 6. Are there more spoilers for Ultimate Masters? We have almost the entire set. There's, I think, three rares, at least before the stream started. There were three rares outstanding. Ugh, they did find it. All right, there's Bedlam. Okay. Well, no Phoenixes, so that's something. They can't Fiery Temper, that's also something. Plays a tap land. opponent passes. Well, play a forest. Play overgrowth. Overgrowth. Pass the turn. All right, opponent. Show us what you got. Show us what you got. We are playing some tooth and nail. Would I play it on stream? Oh, doing CDH on stream. We haven't really done Commander on stream. We did one live Commander Clash, but we normally don't play Commander. So I don't know if that's something that people really wanted. Although EDH is pretty much, uh, 1v1 EDH is pretty much dead slash dying on Magic Online. We have a new donation from Bluechz. <laughs> Bluechz. Oh, blue cheese. Blue cheese. Ah, I see. I see. It's still pronounced blue cheese. I get the feeling that you told me this before. $5 donation. Just grab your artifact blast list is a holiday gift for myself. So here's a holiday gift for you. Thank you so much, blue cheese. Definitely appreciate it. And that deck is fun. That deck is super fun, especially for budget. So thank you so much. It's Stitches for the 25th month in a row. Good Lord. It's been so long. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. All right, five mana. Primal Command. Uh, Primal Command. What do we want to do here? Shuffle Library Tutor Creature? Stormazor for the 15th month in a row. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Also, Gay Black Geek, welcome you as well. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Uh, I murder everyone's name, Blue Cheese. And I mean, CHZ, it's kind of like jizz, jizz. <laughs> So it, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Been playing your Rakdos burn deck, having an argument about whether or not to bring in Angrath against Gold Gary. What do you think? Um, I don't think it's necessary. I think I guess Gold Gary. Your main concern is not getting beat by Wild Growth Walker. If you do not let your opponent go crazy with Wild Growth Walker, it's actually very, very easy to win that matchup. At least that's been my experience. I think we want to gain life. Uh, gain seven life. Let's just gain seven, search for a creature. Or maybe we should shuffle the graveyard, search for a creature. All right, let's, all right. Let's target player shuffles their graveyard. Search your library for a creature. I mean, we do want to get rid of this faithless looting. So opponent shuffles their graveyard. We search for a creature. Opponent. You got a counter. All right, so as far as creature searching, one, two, three. I mean, I think we just eternal witness. That seems best. Play Eternal Witness. Get back Primal Command. And this sets us up to do it again next turn. 
six, seven, eight, nine. All right, play Wooded Foothills past the turn. And we can definitely just chump with this Eternal Witness if we get the chance. And then the second one should be really good. Oh, man, I almost forgot that Fire and Ice was in Popper now. Are we going to win this? I thought we were going to lose this match for sure. Now I'm feeling like we might actually be favored. Possibly. Possibly favored. Yeah, Fire and Ice is a super sweet card. So Primal Command, yeah, if you're trying to read it. Two options. Gain seven. Non-creature permanent on top of the deck. Target player shuffles their graveyard in their library. Search your library for a creature. Put it in your hand. And then shuffle. All right, opponent's looting. Hopefully they don't just hit, like, two arc lights. That would be bad. Fiery Temper. Okay. Going to kill... Eternal Witness. Okay. Opponent. Gets in for five. Yep. And thing in the ice. <sighs> All right, Cragwooded Foothills. Get a breeding pool. Tapped. We could just draw a tooth and nail here, too. Oh, okay. Okay, easy mode, easy mode. <laughs> ah, entwine. Xenagos. Big Mama Emrakul. Xenagos. Emrakul. Going into play. Hasty. Yes. Attacking. And we got there. We got. That's the second time that we've drawn Tooth and Nail at just the perfect time. Bonnet giving us the GG. Sorry, I was talking to our Bonnet. They were asking about uh, what people sideboard in against us, and I said, I don't really know, and that's a 30-30 Emrakul. Bonnet's hacking everything. The thing in the ice stands alone, and game. It's game. Up to 2-1, and one, and that means it is Ridge Wallet time. Ridge Wallet time. So how this works, if you're unfamiliar with the giveaway, I'm going to update our record real quick. Step one, up to two and one, maybe the kids will be eating. Maybe they'll be eating tonight after all. It's possible. It's possible. So if you would like to be entered in the Ridge Wallet giveaway, all you got to do is say anything at all in the chat. Any words that you want in the chat, and you will be entered in the giveaway. So I am going to pull up the sponsor overlay, remind you that the sponsor of our stream and the giver away -er of this Ridge Wallet is RidgeWallet.com, and they make slim front pocket wallets out of carbon fiber and titanium. So thank you so much to them for their support. I'll give you a minute to say anything, any words you want, and then Nightbot will pick a winner at random. You got to be in the chat and respond. So once you're chosen the winner, just respond. Then all you got to do is email me. I'll get your info. You even get to pick the Ridge Wallet that you want. Uh, if you're outside of the U.S., I'll hook you up with some merch store stuff. So that still will be a winning prize of sorts, although I can't ship the Ridge Wallet. So, all right, 10 seconds, and then we're picking. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to roll this, and we will see what happens. So here we go. Here's the roll, and the winner of tonight's Ridge Wallet is... Cartman 61616. Cartman 61616. Cartman. Give me a response. Let me know you're here. Cartman. Uh oh. Is Cartman? Is Cartman here? I don't see it. I don't see Cartman in the chat. Did Cartman leave? Cartman, respond to me. Uh oh. It's been 20 25 seconds. Alright, Cartman. I'll give you another another 30 seconds and if you don't respond we're gonna have to re-roll we're gonna have to re-roll you do have to be in the chat and respond to win that is part of the rules wait cartman all right i see you cartman congratulations cartman uh cartman last thing are you from the united states just for purposes of the giveaway 
uh, are you from the United States? Just, just send me a uh, send me a message. Let me know about that. Congratulations to you, winner of tonight's Ridge Wallet giveaway. And uh, awesome. So all you need to do is send me an email. SaffronOlive at mtggoldfish.com. All right, hang on one second. So, Carbad61616, the winner of tonight's Ridge Wallet giveaway, email me, saffronolive at mtggoldfish.com. Start thinking about the Ridge Wallet that you want. Go pick one out over at the Ridge Wallet store. Let me know, and I will uh, get back to you on email, get your information and whatnot, and get that shipped right out to you. So, congratulations, and good news. There's good news, and that is there's more giveaways incoming. So, if you didn't win tonight, don't be disappointed. Unfortunately, there is no giveaway on Thursday. Thursday because it's Thanksgiving and there's no stream on Thursday but we will have more next week when we are back to streaming so anyway have a great night uh Senata replica thank you so much for hanging out and we're up to two and one we're up to two and one with tooth and nail squeaking out the win also uh if you're disappointed in the meantime as you're waiting for the next giveaway over at the birch page I've mentioned this a couple times 20 percent off with the code thanks 20 until uh until Cyber Monday next week. We lost to <laughs> the Vizier of Remedies devoted Druid combo on turn three both times. <laughs> they literally just had all three combo pieces in their hand two games in a row, and we got absolutely stopped. Absolutely stomped. Yeah, thanks, 20. 20% 20 off over on the merch page. Uh, I think you got to do it all caps. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it's all caps. I don't know if that matters or not. Where did this deck come from? So this is a deck that 5 owed a League on Magic online. And Tooth and Nail's a deck that's floated around under the radar for quite a while. But it normally is not a tier deck by any stretch. We're going to keep this. It's a little middling, but we do have... Oh, are we getting dredged? We do have ramp. Oh, we're getting hollow one. Interesting. How do we keep up with hollow one? Well, at least we're not staring down three hollow ones. <laughs> uh, if I had seen the, the Tron statement, I would have tried to manipulate the bot to give it to that person. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's not an actual thing you could do, just so it's clear. That was a joke. Uh, all right, forest. Get a forest. Utopia Sprawl, our forest. I think we just go blue so we can play Kiora's follower. Pass the turn. Hope we don't get buried. We actually would not mind Burning Inquiry here, even though it's a lot of damage, because we have a lot of lands in hand. You should totally do a modern cube draft and upload it on Thursday evening so we don't miss you so much. Ooh, that would be sweet. I'm definitely excited for Ultimate Masters draft. I have not done any cube drafts this run. I used to cube draft so much. Back before I did content, oh man, I would cube draft for so many hours. But now, making content, I don't have as much time to just, like, play cube drafts for eight hours a day. We talked before about maximized velocity and drakes, but if you would take the build you played in much a brew, what would you cut? Are there any other builds around you would consider more competitive now? I'm building one in Arena and wanted some tips. So the most tier version of the Drake deck is playing Arclight Phoenix. Arclight Phoenix along with Crackling Drake and Is It Drake. Otherwise, uh, there's usually a copy or two of Maximize Velocity. And otherwise, a lot of the cheap cantrip stuff is similar to what we played uh, back on the first week of Standard. Opponent, ooh, discards a Vengevine. Okay. Gets it. More lands. Infinite lands. Well, Kiora's follower. Many, many lands. What it fails? You. Alright, opponent. Do your worst with your venge vines. Make a rough draft to uh, out of it. Yeah, we are about due for more rough drafts. I have I have a playing popper done. I want to do more playing poppers. So there's a playing popper coming next week. 
And then Goldfish Gladiators has been pretty consistent lately. But we need more rough drafts. Wow, opponents not killing us with Vengevine? They're passing? I like the sounds of this very much. Wow, okay. Well, that's good news. Grab a breeding pool. Tapped. Untap. Another Kiora's follower. I'll play Windswept Teeth. Crack Windswept Teeth. Grab a Forest. Tap, untap. Tap, tap, and tap. Play Walking Bliss to X3. And this can cover the Flame Blade at least. Pass the turn. I don't know what our opponent's deck's doing. Stop Goldfish Gladiators, add Playing Popper. Uh, Playing Popper is going to be more regular. I don't think that Goldfish Gladiators will will just stop. And a, what is what is our opponent's? What is going on? What is our opponent's hand? I'm so confused as to what's happening. I really am. How can this Hollow One deck have two lands, six cards in hand? They're not playing lands. What in the world could their hand be? Is it just like all Venge Vines and Hollow Ones? Like three Venge Vines and three Hollow Ones or something? I, I do not get it. All black cards? Yeah, I guess that could be. I think that Foil is going to be busted in Gush decks, but I don't think non-Gush decks in Popper will play it. Although, I mean, most Gush... Most blue decks or many blue decks are gush decks so i think a lot of decks will play it well this matchup scavenging ooze seems insane obstinate bailoth oh man if we can discard a bailoth on turn one to burning inquiry that would be super sweet otherwise go down these mismatched birds of paradise just can't deal with it go down a nissa worm coil seems pretty good maybe worm coil over ha huh. Worm Coil seems good. What else do we want? They weren't even playing lands, though. That's the weirdest part of it. I wish I had a nice place to play Paper Popper. Yeah, Paper Popper is just sort of starting to catch on. Uh, do we want to bring a Nature Claim for Hollow One? The problem is that's the only target, really. I don't know if it's worth it. Rurik Thar is kind of funny. It could be good. They do need to cast a lot of spells. Does it also have reach? It does also have reach. I feel like they cannot beat a Rurikthar. Let's bring let's bring it a Rurikthar. Go down. Maybe we just gotta cut the two Kioras. <sighs> Alright, let's cut Kiora in this matchup. That's a lot of top end stuff. Yeah, let's try it like that. Is Ultimate Masters just Wizard's way of powering up Popper before the competitive leagues start? Uh, it definitely is going to shift Popper a lot. I don't think that's their primary goal, but it's definitely a nice uh, side effect. <laughs> Arbor Elftron and an Emrakul that we're never going to cast. Um, huh. Two Arbor Elves, two Tireless Trackers, Emrakul. Uh, do we keep this? What do you think of Foil and Popper? <laughs> busted, it's busted. Are you going to revisit Dubious Challenge? It seems like the kind of deck that we will play again at some point. I mean, we got two Arbor Elves. I guess this is close enough. Tracker is good. Is Goblin Grenade legal in Popper? I believe the answer is no. It has never been printed as a comment on Magic Online. There's been a majority of modern content on Goldfish the last four or five days. Is it going to continue or will the focus soon switch, uh, switch back to standard? Um, I think right now we are in a Ultimate Masters time, so there's a lot of modern stuff going on with that. But... It's, uh, it's mostly going to be a mix for the time being going forward. I would expect that 
when it's all said and done, we'll see roughly roughly an even mix of standard and modern over the next over the next month and then probably in January why we're waiting for Ravnica Allegiance and it'll probably shift more towards modern. All right, so our breath down. And then Ravnica Allegiances will come out, and uh, or Allegiance. And then it'll shift back heavily to Standard. That's kind of the normal pattern. Set comes out for like a month or a little more. It's pretty much all Standard. Then the next month, it's kind of a mix. And then the month after that, it's mostly Modern. And then the process repeats itself. Yeah, Foil plus Gush seems pretty good to me. Opponent discards a Flame Wake Phoenix. And looting. Well, okay. How many hollow ones might they have? That's the question. I mean, standard is standard. The metagame is diverse, but st uh, standard always. All right, there's a hollow one. Standard. Ooh, noose constrictor. Spicy. Standard always is going to have best decks. That's just kind of how standard works. So I don't think we can really complain, although there's still a lot of disagreement within the archetypes. Walking Ballista, hmm. Well, I guess we just shock ourselves. A bit painful. Shock ourselves, untap, play Tireless Tracker. Pass the turn, take our massive beats from Hollow One and flame wake phoenix this turn opponent what do you think boggles or titan shift uh, titan shift i just don't like boggles boggles i mean they're both reasonable modern decks noose constrictor oh fiery depper about it about it about it hmm well, I guess the good news is this means Flame Wake's not coming back if they fiery temper our tracker. And our opponent's basically out of cards. Yup. Temper. Good art selection. So, the weird thing about Pauper is it goes by Magic Online printings. And Fallen Empires was never on Magic Online. So, while some playgroups vary... If you go to like a pauper tournament at a GP or something, they go by they go by Magic Online rules for pauper. So Flame Lake not coming back. We get beat down by Hollow One. Yes, yes, we see. Down to thirteen. Opponent passes. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm overgrowth so if we overgrowth we play uh, we want to get the clue so play this untapped play tireless tracker play breeding pool untapped play arbor elf and then overgrowth next turn We're going to have to start blocking at some point. <laughs> Reprint Fallen Empires. I don't know if anyone would have would have fun with that. Fallen Empires is one of the, the worst sets. <laughs> it would be sweet for Pauper, though. Do you have a box of that, Jay Zoller? I just assume you have a box of everything. Tireless Tacker, Breeding Pool, down to 11, untapped. Get a clue. Arbor Elf, part two. Pass the turn, see if we can remain alive. Gonna be close, gonna be close with this flame weight coming back. That's a lot of damage. What is your favorite subject in school? And can we get some more Legacy with Ultimate Masters coming out? I actually like Legacy. Whenever we play Legacy, I have a lot of fun. So I would like to do more of it. It's just hasn't been super popular in general as far as content is concerned. So, uh, I don't know. I, it's, that's the tough part. If you want legacy, if you want more legacy, let me know. Because I'm not opposed to it. Opponent gets in. Uh, I guess we got to jump? 
chump here. If we don't chump, we take 10 and we're very dead. Well, I'm not a fan of this, but chump hollow one. Drop to seven. How far will the price of Tarmigoy fall? Uh, my expectation would be a lot. Well, overgrowth the forest. Play breeding pool tapped. Get a clue. Oh dear, this is gonna be close. Tato's with a gift sub to Five Agen. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. Have I ever played Fortnite? I have. Uh, I haven't played it much at all recently, but I have played it. I'm not very good at it, <laughs> but it is fun. I love the Infect Legacy deck that says showed on video. Really hope he plays it. Yeah, the mono blue Infect. That's a really cool idea. Yeah, guild, uh, all the guild mages at common? Are they really? I saw Demir guild mage at common. Are they all common? That's insane. That's going to shake up Popper too, potentially. Tibsy, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. <sighs> all right, so we need to block here, block here. Untap. We're getting ground news constrictor. Who knew that card was so good? Untap. Sack a clue. Draw a card. Grow tracker. We're staying alive ish. We still need a top deck. The second you told me footnote is fun, you hurt me <laughs> like a Tron player. Footnote. Ooh, Bayloth. Huh. Uh, burning Inquiry, please. <laughs> one time. One time Burning Inquiry. Which do you think is better to building Legacy? Black Green Depths or Red Black Reanimator? Hmm. Why are they pumping? Oh, they have another hollow one? Ugh. All right. More hollow ones. Windswept teeth. Huh. A play windswept teeth. Crack windswept teeth. Uh, I am actually not 100% sure. I ne really need to play more Legacy. I know that those are both legit decks, but I'm not 100% sure which one is just better. So we can Ballista X3... And I think we have to Bayloth. So we Bayloth. Go up to eight. Uh, and then I guess we got a Ballista X2 just to have another blocker? Yeah, Ballista X2. Pass the turn. Tano's with a gift sub to Inrific. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. Winning by hard casting Emrakul would be so sweet. All right, opponent. What do you got? We're still going to need to draw something. Like a worm coil would be insane. Hornet queen would be insane. Something like that we need to draw. Wait, what are we getting punted for? What did I do? What did I do? Pwn it. We didn't have enough mana to Ballista X2, right? Opponent attacks. So I think we just block here, block here. If our opponent wants to discard both cards to trade, that's fine. Unless they're fiery tempers. Yeah, I don't know about this news constrictor attack. That's good for us. Could I actually have played it X2? Opponent discards a land. Okay.
and this guard's a neonate. Well, we will ping our opponent. Come on, top deck. Come on, top deck. Should play Abs and Nick Fit in Legacy. I really like Nick Fit. That's one of my favorite decks to play in Legacy. Down to six. Oh. <laughs> okay. Things have turned. Worm Coil. Pass the turn. <laughs> oh, that was a draw. That was a draw. That was a good draw. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, the worm. The worm. Surprise worm. <laughs> uh, we probably will have to play Boggles and Limited. I really just want to Lab Maniac people. Um, yeah, we have ran very well. The Magic Gods for some reason, are pleased with us tonight. Gets in with Flame Wake. Uh, Nick Fit is a weird ramp style deck in Legacy. And you get to play tons of just fun, janky cards. If you saw the Panharmonicon Legacy deck we played, that's, ooh, that is good. That is really good. If you saw the Legacy Panharmonicon deck we played, that's kind of a Nick Fit style deck. Well, let's get in with Worm Coil, gain some life, and wow, that was another insanely good top deck. Like, as good as it gets top deck. <laughs> Master Toadale, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. Opponent takes it. We're back up to Ted. Pona was asking if this is just ramp value, so I was telling them, telling them uh, what we're doing. The stream is running on my end. I would try refreshing. Well, let's play Scavenger Goose and start feasting. This should just essentially win us the game. So E Day News Constrictor gain some life. E Day Insulin Unit. Gain some life. Want to get outside of bolt range, or temper range, whatever it may be. Eat a faithless looting. And now we'll pass. <laughs> oh, those are some good draws in a row. Those are some really good draws in a row. Game ending draws. And we're feeding the kids. We're up to three and one. Man, at the start, we were so... We were so down. We were so down. We were like, oh, I don't know. Modern's so unfair. We're not unfair enough. And we're about to be up to three and one in a competitive league. <laughs> Playing, is this just ramp value? Question mark. Opponent gives us the U with GGs. Up to three and one. The kids are eating. Chess will be open. Flame Lake Phoenix. We don't really care about that. And opponent scoops it up. Tooth and nail. It's working. We gave away a Ridge Wallet. We got to sail the merch page. And we're winning with Tooth and Nail. It's been a good night so far. Can we close it out with the 4 1 Dream? If we can win this last match, we're going to have eight chests to open. And we're going to have enough time to play Momir. What more could you want? What more could you want out of a, a Moto stream? Treasure chest, Moto giveaway. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it for the kids. Let's get this last win for the kids. So what are you most excited for from Ultimate Masters? Like, is there any specific cards or even decks that you're going to build because of the reprints in Ultimate Masters? Commander, Modern... Doesn't matter. Whatever whatever you're thinking about. I'm very curious. I have an idea for Commander Clash. Your only creature in the deck is your commander. And you back it up with only instants and sorceries and equipment and auras. It's like a Voltron feel to it. I played in my playgroup for a while and it was really fun. Ooh. That sounds like a, a really fun idea. Popper Boggles. Dark Depths. Grishel brand in modern. Ooh, yeah, Grizzle brand will be getting cheaper. Nourishing Shoal on the reprint list. Emrakul. Eldrazi Conscription. Oh, that's a fun card. That's one of the sweetest, the sweetest auras. Your voice doesn't match what my mind thinks your face should look like. What does your mind think my my face should look like? Uh, that's not a good hand. 
Well, there'll be a beard cam. There'll be a beard cam before long. And then you'll know what my face looks like, for better or worse. Uh, I guess we keep the ramp. I, I never have too much mana, I guess. Sort of. So, forest and arbor elf. Pass the turn. I love seeing the tutors are getting reprinted. Demonic and Gamble. Yeah, those are two of the best tutors in Magic's history. Well, Gamble, I mean, isn't as good, but for red, super good. Mono Blue, Spawn Sire of Ulamog Trod. Oh, getting the Eldrazi from the sideboard. <laughs> Mountain. That's sweet. Gut shots us. Huh. Uh, okay. Well, now I kind of wish we had played Utopia Sprawl, honestly. Play the forest. Play Utopia Sprawl. On blue. Pass the dirt. Yeah, maybe we should have played Utopia Sprawl if we were worried about gut shot. <laughs> Popper's going to be exciting. It's going to be a lot different. Opponent. Oh, it's one of these decks. This deck seems pretty popular these days. Everyone's... On the thing in the ice plan. Well, overgrowth. Play wins up teeth. Pass the turn. Hope for no disasters. We don't really have a main a main deck way of beating this thing in the ice. Generic half Asian for the second month in a row. I'm going to SCD Baltimore in a couple of week ishes. Week weekish. Uh, looking to bring Jeskai Control. Any tips? Uh, Jeskai Control, sweet. It's a uh, definitely a good deck. I haven't played the newest incarnation of it very much. I think your biggest challenge is going to be figuring out your sideboard cards. It's hard to fight everything. White gives you a ton of good options, but you're going to have to pick, like, do you want to focus on graveyard decks, uh, Tron slash artifact decks? So that's a big challenge there. But it's a it's definitely a good deck. Welcome back to the fishbowl. It's Psycho's birth for the twenty fifth month. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Came up with a sweet popper engine deck built around looping core sky feature with cheap auras with enter the battlefield sack outlets and the new to popper thermos high priest. Ew! I'm down for some new new popper brews. New spicy popper brews sounds sweet. All right, no flip yet. Well, crack wins up teeth. Grab a stomping ground. The deck looks fun. Thermos High Priest. Man, Popper's getting such a big shakeup. I like it. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for our resubscribers. Pony passes. Heh. <laughs> So we play Hornet Queen, it gets bounced, and then we replay it. Or we just Primal Command. I guess we Primal Command. Play the Forest. Primal Command. Gain 7 life, search for a creature. So we gain seven. We search for a creature. The question is, what creature do we want? I mean, I guess it's probably Eternal Witness. Maybe from Evil Titan. Jakoto for the second month in a row. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. A uh, primal command can only put non-creature permanents on top of the library. If we could have put Thing in the Ice on top, we definitely would have done that. Uh, Eternal Witness, Primeval Titan. Eternal Witness is probably our best long game plan. So what we're hoping is they flip this thing in the eyes and then Hornet Queen kind of gums up the board. I think we're just going to take Eternal Witness. I think that's fine. It's prime time. And we're going to take Eternal Witness for now. Eternal Witness lets us get back Primal Command and just do it again to find another creature, gain some more life. And then we can always find prime time with a future one. Listening to the podcast origins reminded me of my start with Alana and my love of Godsire and Wild Nakatl, which makes me wonder, is Zoo too fair for modern these days? Um, 
I would say no. We've seen some zoo decks, like, zoo might be too fair to be a, a top tier deck, but I don't think it's just too fair in a overall sense. So let's play Windswept Eve. And we should have used the blue. Get back Primal Command for the future. Wanted to bluff a counter, but that's kind of that was kind of silly. Play Birds of Paradise. Pass the turn. Recycle Toad! But we've seen... Uh, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Thanks for all the contact. Keeping the fire lit for magic and telling me I'm not alone with my punting. Well, thank you for the resub and for the for the kind words. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, So with Zoo, we've seen Pelt Collector kind of start doing things with like a Vexing Devil Pelt Collector type shell. But... It's definitely not a a top tier archetype. It's kind of like second or third tier, but it's definitely something that you can do with the right build. All right, here is the great flippening. We have a new donation from Dan Wildfire, who, if you missed it, if you missed it, Dan Wildfire this weekend, round one of the GP, on camera playing Punisher Bird. Not only on camera playing Punisher Bird, but on camera, playing Punisher Burn and it flipped a bait fire off the top of the deck at the last possible turn for Xaxes thanks to a two elect uh, electrostatic fields. It was so awesome. It was super sweet, Dan. Your shout out on Twitter meant a lot. Thanks for that. I really liked you clipping my bait fire top deck. Well, thank you so much for the for the donation day in. and yeah it was super sweet congratulations on uh on that game i know you said you finished like four and four which i mean you're playing a rakdos burn deck at a gp i think that's a good performance but your camera match it was so sweet so check it out check it out if you haven't seen it it was super sweet the sky flag welcome to the fishbowl thank you for your subscription big soups here for our new subscriber uh i think it's queen time so Step one, Hornet Queen. Pretty good at gumming up the board with Crackles. Man, this deck has a lot of Crackling Drakes. Crack, we have another new notation. Thank you so much. Grab a Forest, Birds of Paradise, and the Queen and the Bees gumming up the board. Want a PTQ with Punisher Burn. Ooh, super sweet. New notation, new notation from... Oh, come on, Streamlabs. Show me. Show me who it's from. From Ballbag says, Hey, Seth, love the content as always. In your opinion, what would you say is the most important pauper card from UMA so far? Uh, so as far as... Thank you so much, uh, Ballbags, for the donation. Uh, as far as new cards to pauper, definitely foil. I think foil is a card that is most game breaking or potentially game breaking from that bunch so that's number one is foil also on the list though is the reprints having chainer's edict that's a popper staple that's a big deal a cure Ugh. oh no um what is what is the counter spell circular logic circular logic another important reprint so i think as far as new cards definitely foil but as far as old cards, we got a lot of good reprints too. A really good set for Pauper, I think. Thank you again for the donation. Stratton, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big scoops here for our new subscriber. Uh, Pauper's catching on slightly in paper and still a pretty big deal on Magic Online. All right, so Primal Command. We will... What is... Do we need to worry about this graveyard? There's one Phoenix. Primal Command. Opponent just... They scoop it up? They know what's coming. They don't want a part of it. They're done. They're done. Wall of Chaos for the 23rd month in a row. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. I'm excited for the Hover Barrier reprint. Uh, I mean, with the name Wall of Chaos, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> Uh, so Pauper is weird. If you are not familiar with the Pauper format, it goes by Magic Online. So if a card has been printed at Common on Magic Online, it's legal, and most paper 
tournaments and playgroups also play by those rules, play by the Magic Online rules, which normally it's the same, but there's some weird exceptions. For really old cards, like Alpha, Beta, Legends, like that era, uh, they were released as, I guess, the first Master sets uh, were on Magic Online, and that's how those cards got on there, so you can't just get Alpha on Magic Online or Legends. So some of the old cards have weird rarity shifts, and then there was also Vintage Masters, which was a Magic Online only master set which put chainer's edict for example at common battle screech at common so those cards are legal in paper pauper based on vintage masters which was ever printed in paper so it's a little bit confusing but yeah that was a strange early scoop i our opponent did know about the primal command so i think maybe they just thought that they could not beat another primal command there and didn't want to wait for us to figure out what we were going to do with the primal command. Ugh, how do we sideboard against this deck? I can't. So we, we brought in Chameleon Colossus. <laughs> I think we want Rurik Thar. We want Scavenging Ooze. Those are our big ones. And then <laughs> I don't know if Chameleon Colossus to be a horror is actually worth it. Can that actually be worth it? Yeah, the Hornet Queen was great. I think we played that pretty much how we wanted to play it. Do we really want to bring in the horror? <laughs> It is funny. It doesn't help with Crackling Drakes. Maybe we want another big flyer. Maybe we want a Tarka. We saw a lot of Crackling Drakes. Maybe we go a Tarka. I don't think Kiora is very good in this matchup because of the hasty flyers. All right. All right. We'll bring in Clauses. We'll bring it in. We'll go down both Kioras. Man, our curve is so top heavy. Look at all those... <laughs> Look at all those expensive cards. I guess Walking Ballista isn't great. Let's go down Ballista for Worm Coil. Just every every expensive thing. We're going over the top. <laughs> Colossus does not have Reach, but it's a horror, so it doesn't get bounced by Thing in the Ice. <laughs> uh, Rurik Thar does have Reach. I mean, we just got a bunch of big whammies. If Oh, no. Well... This is the most expensive hand we've had in modern in a long time. Uh, uh, I don't know if we can keep this with no ramp. We are on the draw. We did win game one. Colossus does not have reach. Hmm. Yeah, we probably can't keep this. We probably die before we do anything. All right. Well, honestly, I'd rather have... Eh, no Nick those. I'd rather have the all ramp hand than have the all seven drop hand. Flooded strand for our opponent. Now we just gotta draw some big things to go with it. Serum visions. Ew. This serum I still I will never know why they made this serum vision art. I will never know. <laughs> uh wizards. Wizards in your art. Alright, forest. Utopia Sprawl. Man, if our opponent can't interact with this, we can cure his follower into Primal Command, and that's pretty good. Do you purposely talk in a higher voice when recording? I listened to your latest e episode of your podcast, and your voice sounded a lot lower. Just wondering. Um, I don't purposely talk in a higher voice when I'm recording. I think that part of it is also... Uh, the editing stuff that happens on the podcast... That doesn't happen with all videos. Alright. Kiora's follower. Play Beseju. Pass the turn. There's like some audio adjustment stuff that the podcast does that nothing else does. So I think that might be some part of it. But uh, I don't intentionally talk in a different way when I'm recording or anything. Alright. There's the bolt. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I guess that was to be expected. Hey, thank you, Work Faster. Serum Visions. Oh, man. Is this flipping already? Ugh, that's not good. That's not good. Can I do funny voices other than your normal one? <laughs> um, No, not really. I've never been, never been very good at doing, like, impressions or funny voices acting. I mean, I'm sure I could probably make funny voices if I wanted to, but <laughs> everyone can, I would say. But no. That's not like my hidden talent or anything. I mean, this hand's not the worst. Eh, okay, crackles. 
Opponent passes. <laughs> There's Colossus. Well, play the forest. I guess we Primal Command. What do we do with Primal Command? I should try to imitate Tomer. <laughs> do an impression of Reduke doing comedy. I'm going to have to work on my impressions, I guess, if that's something people are wanting. Uh, we could shuffle the graveyard? That doesn't really... I mean, I guess we could shuffle the graveyard and gain life. We could gain life and tutor a creature. Hmm. Is shuffling the graveyard better than gaining life, though? It's making the Crackling Drake lose three power. Like, is that better than just gaining seven immediately? All right, so... Yes, I wish we could put... <laughs> I wish we could put Thing in the Ice on top. I do. Alright, we'll gain 7 and search for a creature. Uncounterably. I don't know what we're searching for. Technically, we don't have the mana for Rurik Thar, and it just gets bounced. Which is not great. Hmm. It might just be Ooze. Ooze gives us something to do if we don't have uh, Ooze doesn't stop Drake though we could Eternal Witness search for Arbor Elf hmm we can't cast it this turn though I guess next turn we could Arbor Elf Colossus but everything's about to get bounced yeah Ooze doesn't shrink the Drake that's very true alright I guess we'll take Arbor Elf I don't know about this plan. We are up to 25, but once uh, once this thing flips, that's a lot of damage. Opponent. Scalding Tarn. Arclight Phoenix. Here comes the flyers. Many, many flyers. Opponent gets in, gets in, hits us. For six. Yup. Down to 19. Opponent passes. Land? Well, now I think the plan is Primeval Titan. Yes, please. Uh... Hmm, what do we get? What do we get? World Spine Word could be funny. I've been thinking about getting your White Black Aristocrat stack. Would three push and two path be the correct split? Uh, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good to me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're still a mana away from entwining. Nykthos, we only have three mana symbols right now. We can get it, though. Maybe just, like, Nykthos and Wolf Run? Yeah, let's Nykthos, Wolf Run. If we draw a land, we get an uncounterable Tooth and Nail. And if our opponent flips Thing in the Ice, they also bounce their Flyers? Steam Vents. Tapped. Alright, let's see if we're dead. Let's see if we're dead. Four cards to add for our opponent. Hopefully they can't kill us. I guess they probably can't. They can flip thing in the ice and then, like, replay something? Panglacial Worm could actually work in this deck. We need to start putting Panglacial Worms in more deck. The Surprise Worm is just too good. It's too good. Opponent's going to not flip. Interesting. Interesting. Gets in for seven. 
Okay. Well, hopefully we just draw land. Down to 10. Mountain. Oh, now they're going to flip? All right, now our opponent flips. Bounces. Yep, gets everything back. Land for the win? Land? It's a land. Windswept teeth. Crack windswept teeth. Good game with the 4-1. Oh, my goodness. Apparently, this deck is legit. Apparently, it's legit. We are counting properly, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That will be an entwined tooth and nail. And apparently, we crushed this deck. We beat it twice. Entwine it. Can't counter it. Besaju. Chat, I love you. Chat, it was chat who suggested the Besaju, which is probably winning us this game. Our opponent could definitely have a counter. That's a Xenagos. That's an Evercle. An opponent scoops it up, and that's a 4 1. That's a 4 1 with Tooth and Nail. Wow, the deck worked. It worked very well. And that means the kids are eating. We get a QP, which eh, someday we might use. More importantly, eight treasure chests to open. Eight chests, eight chests. Good call, chat. You helped us feed the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we wanted names earlier when, when Besaju was crushing us, but now, chat, you're the best. All right, let's uh let's eat some <laughs> wait, that doesn't make sense. Eat some treasure chests. Let's open some treasure chests. <laughs> and then we can and then we can wrap up with Bomir tonight. We got time for a game of Bomir. Alright, full set, give us a full set, please, magic gods. Eight chests to go. Here we go, here we go. Chest number one, we get <laughs> Might of Oaks, uh, like the worst become immense of all time. A spiritual primordial. I don't know if I've ever said that. I just say primordial. Druid of the Cowl. Oh, well, good commander card. Not really any value, though. All the primordials are good in commander. Seven more. Seven more to go. Give us that complete set. We've never done it, and we open a lot of chests. 40 play points. That's good. Add it to the play point pile. It's like $4 of play points. I don't know where we're at with play points right now. Where are we? Sixteen ninety six. <laughs> all right. All right. Next, we get Sir Pull Cool. Daring Archaeologist. Ah, one of the worst historic cards. Just hasn't really worked out. Maybe someday. It's not like that bad if we get another artifact set somehow. Garrison Sergeant. Occasionally does work in limited. Vampire Neonate. Eh. All right. Five to go. Come on. Give us a sec. Give us something. Something. Ugh. 50 play points. Blaring Recruiter. Cleansing Ray. Halfway through and so far. The Magic God smiled on our gameplay, but not on our... Ooh, Archon of Valor's Reach. This was a card that people were a little hyped about for, like, Legacy and Vintage when it was spoiled, but it hasn't actually done anything. The Multiverse Live for the 14th month in a row. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's here for our new subscriber. I mean, 30 play points is fine. That's worth more than a chest is, so that's, that's fine. Come on. Ugh. Ooh, Steamkin. Uh, I bet it's not worth anything. So much was opened. Runaway, Steamkin, Guilds of Ravnica, 53 cents. <laughs> well, maybe someday. Dread Defiler, I don't, this is one of the Eldrazi I've never played. Exile a creature from your graveyard, opponent loses life equal to its power. Huh. It's really expensive, but maybe Commander. Lay Weaver, untap some lands. All right, last two. Two shots. Two shots and a complete set. Or a Nexus. Ageless Entity. Hmm. Bulk. Manolith. Bulk. Moment of Craving. Good sideboard card for Danto Vanguard, but not worth anything. Well, here we go. Here we go. Last one. Last one. Do you think Steamkin should be in 12 bowl? Uh, probably. Come on. Complete set. What time? Ugh. 15 play points. Well, those were some pretty brutal chess. I mean, value-wise, we did five because of play points, so I think we, like, broke even roughly, uh, compared to if we had sold them, but uh, no exciting opens. 
There is good news, though. There is good news. And the good news is, since this is our first Magic Online stream in a while, and our league got done early enough, we get to wrap up with everyone's favorite, which is Momir. So we're going to pull up the Momir list. We finished with a 4-1 in a competitive league with Tooth and Nail. It was actually pretty legit. Momir list! Momir list! I f his Commander Zacho played recently. For some reason, that name, I feel like that name has been on the top of the list forever. Commander Zacho, Orcish Veteran, Lockout, Alpha Moyer, Scheiser, Chicken Fajitas, Heisenberg Hat, Magical Alex234, and Stoplight Man. It's Mobier time! Uh, I don't think you're bumped off the list, C-Man, unless we've played. You might just be further down. Jay Zoller coming through with the, bo uh, the bot starting. Watching videos at work seems like the best way to do it. Hey, good night, Sammy Fisher's Teddy. So if you're on the Momir list, send me a challenge and we'll wrap up uh, with some Momir. I know people... I know some people leave during Momir, so... Uh, and that's fine if you're not a Momir fan. But reminder, Thursday, Thanksgiving in the US, no stream. I will not be here. Apologies, I'm sorry, but I, I can't do it. I gotta do other stuff. So, Momir list, Commander Zacho, Orcish Veteran, Lockout, Alpha Moyer, Scheiser, Chicken Fajitas, Heisenberg Hat, Magic, Alex234, and Stoplight Man. Send me a challenge if you're on the list and we will uh, we'll wrap up with Momir. I'm trying a Hawatli Warrior Poet. Dawn of Hope is my sideboard against Control and my Boros Angels. Any opinion? Um... Those make sense. I think those are two cards that are are good against control. So I think that plan, on paper at least, makes sense. I mean, obviously, it depends on how it feels. Like, maybe it doesn't play as well, but it makes sense uh, to me. Tro... Let me, let me see. Tro... Let me, let me double-check the Momir list. Tro, Tro... All right, that's Lockout. All right, here we go. So if you're not familiar with Momir, you should get familiar with it. Not only is it played on Magic Online, it's uh, also played on Magic Arena now. So if you have never seen it before, it is a really fun casual format. You see crazy things. You see crazy cards. You get to talk about the cool old art. We get to chat. It's just like a fun casual way to wrap up the stream. So I always have a blast with it. The rules are simple. You start with 24 life. Your deck is 100% basic land cards. And you get this Momir avatar which lets you each shirt pay x discard a card only can do it one time and you get a token that's a random creature copy of a wait a token that's a copy of a random creature of that converted mana cost that's a better way of saying that what other content is on the docket for this week so uh we have free to play fish tomorrow and also friday so if you're a free to play fish fan keep an eye out for those and then tomorrow night against the odds playing some force fruition in modern there's a goldfish gladiators on thursday which is standard obviously because it's on arena a deck that i've been working on for a while but it took me a while to get it pygmy hippo huh what does this do took me a while to get it to where it was videoable but i'm excited for it. it's a super sweet unique deck and oh my god i think it's the longest what did it take Let's see if you can guess the deck by the time it took Five matches on Arena, the runtime was three hours and 20 minutes, I think, and no one was, like, griefing or uh, running the clock. It was just, that's how long it took to play five matches. And there was one Arena Scoop match, too, where someone scooped after game one because uh, they didn't like the matchup. Three hours and 20 minutes for five matches. So that's coming for Goldfish Gladiators. Kamala for the one-year resub. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Soup's cheer for our new subscriber. All right, we make a two-drop. Rattle Chains. Modern staple Rattle Chains. Yeah, just a flyer. When Pygmy Hippo attacks and isn't blocked, you may have Defending Player activate a mana ability... What? Activate a mana ability on each land they control and lose all unspent mana. If you do, Pygmy Hippo assigns no combat damage this turn. At the beginning of your next main phase, you had... Oh. 
All right, so I think this is one of those cards that made sense when Mana Burn was a thing, but now that Mana Burn is not a thing, it does not make nearly as much sense. Because in a world of Mana Burn, your opponent couldn't just tap out all their lands, but without Mana Burn, you obviously just tap your lands and it, it's a 2-2. Ooh, Spiny Starfish! <laughs> Pay a blue to regenerate at the beginning of each end step. If it was regenerated this turn, create a 0-1 blue starfish creature token for each time it regenerated. <laughs> Should play modern artifact mill with diligent excavator. Ooh, that sounds sweet. I've got a mono white silence deck I've been toying around with. Mind giving it some feedback? Yeah, let me see lockout. That sounds sweet. Opponent gets a swirling spriggan. Target creature you control becomes the colors of your choice until in a turn. 3-3 three, three for 4. Um, yeah, we'll just take our our hippo beats. <laughs> I do really want to see it. I need blue mana so I can see a starfish token. I really do want to see what this looks like. I'm regretting discarding my islands, even though at the time it was the correct decision. Makeshift Mauler. All right, we'll get in for 2. I have an eggs deck in Legacy, but there was a pair of tops in it last time I played it. Any suggestions on what to replace it with? Ugh. It's hard to say without really looking at the deck list. There isn't just a, a clean replacement for top. It's a pretty unique card. <laughs> Come on, Starfish Token. Let's see what the, what's the art look like. I mean, that's a that's a starfish with many little starfishes. Oh, those are the, the baby starfishes it makes. Island. Yes! Okay. We are leaving up blue mana. Huh? I No, we don't want to tap our island. <laughs> All right. Make a four drop. We're going to play off curve for spiny starfish token value. Uh, also, what do we get? Harpoonist. 2-2 two, two flyer. When it attacks, you may have target creaser lose flying until end of turn. All right. Get in with... Rattle Chains. Have you considered using Void Maw as an against the odds deck? Ooh, that would be a good one for the poll. I have not I have not put it on the poll yet, but that sounds like a good option for the poll. Uh, also for content this week, obviously, uh, Commander Clash on Friday. Against the odds, or no, Much a Brew on Sunday. It's a sweet one. It's a sweet one. We're playing the People's Cannon. Mono, <laughs> mono, or green red, I guess. Three land Goblet Charbelger in modern. So that's going to be a fun one. Uh, Yeah, so tons of stuff coming up. Can we get some Arena Momir on stream sometime instead? Arena Momir is not always on Arena. That's a problem. But once Arena has that option... And especially if we could challenge each other, we will definitely take advantage of it. But Momir on Arena shows up for like a couple days here and there, and you can't play against other players, which is a little, a little bit disappointing. Hmm. All right, make a mountain. Momir is having a hard time with the, these lands tapping. All right, let's try it like this. Make a six. Oh, no, no, no. We got to make a five. All right, yeah. We got to leave up our blue mana. Our main goal of this match is not to win. We want to see a starfish show good. That is priority number one. River Kelpie. This is another really cool card that we've never played. When it, a, it or another permanent enters the battlefield from your graveyard... Draw a card whenever a player casts a spell from a graveyard. Draw a card. I feel like while five mana is a lot, it does have persist. And in the right deck, this could do a lot of sweet things. It could just do so much. Yeah, we are we're mono blue mom here. Opponent makes a bunch of tetravites that can't be enchanted. <laughs> oh, Momir. A man, uh, Mara Tandris, the bad Amara. Ugh. Yeah, sure. No! Oh, dear. Dear God. Oh, just kidding. It's not a bad Amara. I don't think... I think you actually have to... You actually have to have it dealt damage to 
to work. It doesn't count as regenerating unless it would die. All right. Amara is absolutely insane, actually. Bad Amara is best Amara. Because all of our stuff is technically tokens. So that means we just, uh... Wow! It's continuing! <laughs> the mono blue trend continues. <laughs> all right. Pona doing their tetravite things. I mean, I'll activate it earlier this time, but I'm pretty confident that you have to actually block for it to count. <laughs> what are the odds of hitting all blue creatures? It's got to be a good odds. Hey, what's up, Verbit? Opponent makes an eight. First strike lifelink, pay five life, put three counters on it. Good God. That's a big ol'. Well, good thing we got our spiny starfish to keep this Lacia at bay. Ooh, let me see lockout. Silence. Opponent, go attacking. Attack us, please. We want a starfish token. Oh, the flyers, opponent. Well, we will block. Kill one. And now, why can I not tap? <laughs> Moto's having a hard time with this tapping. It won't let me tap this island. Well, I guess we will never know. Uh, pass the turn. That is so weird. Silence.deck. <laughs> Isakar Zepter Silence. Definitely a fun combo. Plus, you got Mana Tithe. That seems like a really annoying deck to play against, that's for sure. It looks fun and pretty uh, budget friendly as well. What is going on with our land tapping? We didn't have any trouble with this earlier. I don't know why we're having all kinds of issues now. All right, make a seven. More blue creatures. <laughs> Oh, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a row. Seven in a row. Uh, well, it's it must be because it's Momir, because it didn't do this when we were playing Constructed. Uh, well, all right. No one ever dies. <laughs> who, time out, who times out first? <laughs> Will we ever get a non-blue creature? <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh god so i guess we start making land drops up to 15 is probably the right strategy about it All right, Swamp Go. All right, opponent's going to... Opponent's going to attack. Let's see if we can regenerate. We can't. This isn't working! Oh, my God. Why? Is there... Am I missing something? Is there some reason we are not allowed to tap our blue mana? <laughs> what is going on, Moto? Uh, well, it only prevents it to... Uh oh. <laughs> it doesn't work with Amara. And plus, I can't... I can't tap my blue mana! It's not a thing that Moto will let me do. Yeah so weird yeah I just I can't do it this is the weirdest game of Momir Moto 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 attacks
We can't regenerate it, though. <laughs> I don't think it would have worked anyway, but... Yeah, lifelink is prevented. What a weird game. Opponent makes their land drop. We can tap it during our turn. Play an island. Pass the turn. When this becomes monstrous, tap four creatures. They don't tap for as long as you control Shipbreaker Kraken. All right. I mean, eventually we're going to get to Emrakul's. Play an island. Pass the dirt. We could try to hit an 8 drop. But if the other person is going to Emrakul... Oh, it let us tap. Maybe it just did not like that specific island. I think we're doing it. Opponent. Uh-oh. Doing things? <gasps> yes! 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 New plan! Ah! <laughs> uh, no! Ah! Oh, we can't tap! It's that island! We can only... <laughs> oh, this is the weirdest moto bug I've ever had! It's also doing it to half most of my swaps in all of my mountains. <laughs> Alright, sure. Well, now our opponent's going to mill themselves out. That's our new strategy. It lets us tap them now. Well, let's just make a... There's 11 drops, right? Yeah, I think so. Discard an island. Oh, uh, Ulamog. Well, we don't want to attack with Ulamog. We want we want our opponent to get milled out. Oh my god. This game. This is the weirdest, buggiest Momir game I've ever played. Yeah, now we just now we just sit back and wait for Jin Gataxias to <laughs> to kill our opponent. And they can't even suicide it in and make us block because the damage is prevented. Our opponent does get to keep making things every turn now. Is this a 12? Ooh. All right, it's an 11. Hypnox. Well, joke's on you. No cards in hand. <laughs> uh, it makes... Ulamog makes a sacrifice. And we can't... We don't get the, the exile trigger, destroy trigger, because it's not cast. All right, uh, make an 11. Are we just getting Ulamogs? Actually, let's make a 10. 10s are cooler. I never make 10s. Stratodon. 5-5 five, five for 10. It has Trample, at least. All right, pass the turn. I don't want to annihilate, because they're going to lose to Jid Gataxias. I think annihilating is actively bad here. I think we win by our opponent drawing their entire deck. I am considering crafting Grixis control on Magic the Other Arena. Did Nicobo Lust go good in other decks or mainly get Grixis control? Uh, Grixis control is the main one. You can also play... You can also play... Like Grixis dragons. Or even like five color dragons. Those are probably the best options. I think we're going to send a message. We're going to send a message. We're so confident that you're going to mill yourself out. Ornithopter you. <laughs> the mill and kill. Finally. Uh, what happened to the chat? Oh, no. Chat. Oh, thank you for saying that. Someone should have pointed that out earlier. It has returned. I didn't realize it was not up. Thank you for reminding me. Pwn it. Yeah, we'd go monstrous if 
if we could tap our mana, Emrakul. Well, let's Shipbreaker Kraken. Tap down. Emrakul, Hypnox, Random Flyers. Oh, we're not going to get to see our Spiny Starfish token. Make a zero. Oh, hang her back. All right, pass the turn. Oh, I really want to see a Spidey Starfish token. Can you play Brawl on Arena? You cannot. Um, there is Singleton on Arena, which is kind of like Brawl, but without Commanders. Whether or not Brawl comes, hard to say for sure. I think it's possible that 1v1 Brawl goes on eventually, but multiplayer is something that's essentially been ruled out of Arena. So I wouldn't expect multiplayer brawl. All right, we got to make the sporting, the sporting seven. If we hit a phage, we weren't meant to get the, the mill kill. <laughs> oh, all right, wouldn't that be, that would be something. All right, it's a craw giant. <laughs> What a weird Bomir game. Well, that's why you don't get Jigataxias. How can our opponent win? I guess they should make like an eight and try to bounce the board. They need to bounce their own, but then they're going to, they should have done that earlier, I guess. Are they going to get up to, yeah, they're going to get to 15. They made it there. Wow, both Emrakuls, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh, yes um oh no now we got a block 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 spiny starfish doing their job <laughs> Nothing happens because of Amara's on both sides of the battlefield. We dropped a nine. Opponent, you can't say no to Jid Gataxias. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, the weirdest, buggiest Mobier game I've ever played. Hopefully this one goes smoother. Going for Lab Maniac would be a cool next level, next level play there. <laughs> I don't know how practical it is. There's a lot of three drops, but could have given it a shot. Uh, it was giving us, it didn't do this in any of our modern games, but in our Momir game, it was not letting us tap our mana all the time. Like during our opponent's turn, it would only let us tap one land or two lands sometimes and would not let us tap any land sometimes. It was very strange. Bone it. Yeah, no actual sideboarding in Bomir. What do we get in the two drop slot? Pwn it. Two drop. Ooh. What do you think of this border? What is your feeling on the future site border? What if it returned? Would you like to see a return of the future site border or no? Uh, let's discard a planes. Ooh, but do Balduvi and Hydra. Zero one. Enters battle for the next counters. Remove a plus one plus zero counter prevent the next one damage to it pay three put a counter on it do this only during your upkeep man that is that is a pretty bad hydra i guess it's better if you can cast it for a bunch of mana but still what do you think future side border is epic yeah i really like future side border i would love to see the return of future side border what do you think of lab maniac being uncommon now i love it by the way i need it for uh nekazar and guadahafa sea drake Oh, boy. Oh, dear. Okay. That's not a card you want to hit. Not a card you want to hit. Well, I guess we're a uh, Drake Stompy. Opponent. So, I think, yeah, Sea Drake is pretty bad. 
Maybe they could make that a common and a thrun. I wonder if this could get downgraded all the way to common. I guess it's, yeah, probably not. Maybe uncommon. Well, we got to take it. I don't know how we're going to win now. We're so far behind. Back to making two drops. Oh, there's a question I was trying to answer that I that I missed. Oh, Lab Maniac. I think that's a really cool downgrade. It's a little weird because we usually... I don't know. Have we ever had a I win the game card that was uncommon? I almost think that we haven't. But I think it's definitely a super sweet downgrade for limited. And it's going to be super cheap. It's like $8 or it was $8. But now it's going to be incredibly cheap for for people to actually play with. I mean, we could chump block the 3 1. Ugh. And a flyer? That's gonna. Oh, it actually works with Momir, too. Opponent. Big attack. Well, let's kill the blade. Yeah, I win the game is. It's always been a rare ability, but I guess that's part of what makes Ultimate Masters Ultimate. <laughs> it could break all the rules, including I win the game cards. Okay, Urborg Panther. Sacrifice it. Destroy target creature blocking Urborg Panther. Sacrifice a creature named Feral Trader, Breast Stealer, and Urborg Panther. Search library for Spirit of the Night. All right. Uh, seems unlikely to be relevant. Is this the game that copied Hearthstone? <laughs> Actually, it's more the other way around. Magic has been around for... Uh, no, this is not... Okay, I know what you're meaning. Magic Arena is the game that is kind of the Magic version of Hearthstone. This is Magic Online. We play Magic Arena... Man, we are getting crushed. We play Magic Arena a lot for Standard, but we were playing Modern tonight, so Modern is not on Arena yet. I don't think there's a 4-drop that saves us here. Opponents hit the Mythic Rare curve. Angel Fire Crusader, not going to get it done. And we're on to game three. On to game three. I really want another starfish. Hey, welcome, Wayoto. Good to have you. Thank you so much for swinging by. Momir. Actually, it's kind of funny when I play Hearthstone. Uh, I haven't had one in a while since Arena came out, actually. But I used to get on these kicks where I'd play Hearthstone a lot for a couple weeks. And after a while, it would start to feel a little bit like Momir. I mean, I think it's just because of how the game handles variants. Like, in Magic... In Magic, variants is not often part of the cards. Like, there's some random effects, but they really shy away from high variance cards because the variance comes from the mana system and lands. On Hearthstone... You get a free land drop every turn. You know you're going to curve out. So if they didn't have a lot of variance in the cards, the game would the game would probably not be very fun. Spitflame Witch. Well, if we need that one point of damage, could be relevant. Yeah, Drake is brutal. Oh, man. Foyging Seder is good. Drake is... It's not quite like Phage or Belzenlock where you just straight up lose, but it is not ideal. I think we actually got to skip three. Let's get in with our witch. Hit our opponent. Oh, opponent's jumping the curve again. Voyaging Seder. Hearthstone is consistent in terms of playing your stuff because of how the resource system works. Uh, but they have a lot more random effects that you don't see on magic cards as much. Like, this deals between three and six damage or whatever. Magic doesn't really have many cards that, that simulate that, but that's because Hearthstone doesn't have magic variants where uh, sometimes you don't draw as many lands as you need. So the variance is just different, the way the games handle it. How will Ultimate Matters Masters affect prices on Modo? Um, I expect it will have a big impact over the short term, although we've seen with past master sets that they're only draftable for like two weeks. So the supply runs out pretty quickly. And we've even had, there was a famous example a couple years ago. There were Zendikar, one damage to any target. Ugh. Um, 
there were Zendikar flashback drafts, and the price of fetch lands actually increased while the drafts were happening. So there's going to be a lot of people that are like, all right, this is my chance. So it might be less of an impact than, than you would think because of the short draft time and because a lot of people are going to be jumping on the cards. Yeah, we got, we got all the land colors, that's for sure. Missing a point of damage. Yeah, maybe we should have just done it. Although this does impact both of us, and our opponent has a flyer. Well, now two flyers. So I don't know if we want to race to the point where we're we're hurting ourselves. Uh, all right, play the mountain. Make a five drop. Lithophage. Bidding of your upkeep, sacrifice it and let you sacrifice a mountain. Ah! Why are we getting all these things that just brutally, <laughs> brutally take down our own lands? Oh, whiffing out of five drop is so not good. Should I buy modern staples now or after ultimate masters drops? So normally with master sets, historically, you will get the best price roughly a month after the set comes out. And that period will last four months, six months, and then after about a year or so, normally is when you really start to see prices start to tick up. So you'll see now a lot of the cards from Modern Masters 2017, which is now like a year and a half, eh, almost two years now, I guess, getting close to two years in the past, are back up to almost where they were before they were reprinted. So, so yes, uh, wait about a month about a month after the set releases and then you should get good deals like through the spring and even the summer for the most part and then by next fall and winter that's when we'll start to see prices uh, assuming that works like normal sets uh, normal master sets then we'll start to see prices tick up a little bit and then after a year or two they will they'll be back to roughly where they were before more so harder our famous uh, combo bees, necrotic ooze combo bees. Well, that gives us a little bit of ramp if we keep it alive. Why are we mostly playing mountains and swamps? There are more creatures with abilities that use this mana. Uh, it might not be that it's more, but the best abilities are traditionally black and red. On Momir, it's hard to spend mana on random things like untapping your Locust Swarm. What you really want is removal abilities for the most part, and most of the removal abilities are black and red. Also, it helps minimize the odds of random land walk. If a source would deal damage to a permanent player deals half that damage rounded down, oh man. All right, gonna be a long one. Buckle up. Not quite Amara, but close. The Drake only gets us for one now. Old Will for the ninth month in a row. <laughs> oh, Veramit. Welcome back to the Fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big Scoops here for our new subscriber. All right, let's make an eight. We get to jump the curve. This uh, Ghost of Innocence is gonna be a bit troubling. Symbiotic Worm. Uh, hits for three, thanks to this Ghost of Innocence. This has been one of the wackier Momir games I've ever played. I mean, Momir is a weird format and weird things happen, but this has been a weird one for sure. Bonet. Eight drop. Razia. Would be devastating if our opponent didn't have Ghost of Innocence. <laughs> <laughs> Vote it. Dreadboard be in reprinted RNA, yes or no? I'm going to say no, but we get something that is similarly powerful for dealing with creatures and planeswalkers. I mean, we could just see straight up Dreadboar. I don't think it's impossible. I know uh, Dan Wildfire was telling us earlier that uh, they were talking to some Wizards people at the GP and they said they weren't overly worried about Teferi this winter because there were going to be answers in the other guilds. So, I expect that we'll have some sort of good Planeswalker. Well, there's a flyer at least. I think we'll have some sort of good Planeswalker hate. <laughs> yeah, there was double Amara in game one. 
I'm losing connection. Gotta go. Thanks for being awesome. Thank you for being an awesome Zyre. Have a wonderful week. I will not be here on Thursday. Thanksgiving. I won't be here. But I will see you next week on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, uh, Zyre. I mean, we got Assassin's Trophy. Something as powerful as Dreadboar is not really something I expect to see. Uh, I think Rakdos will get a premium removal spell. I think... I think that we want answers to cards like Teferi. So, wait, if we block... Oh, my God. We block here. This deals three. So, this deals three. And then this deals one. I think this works. All right. I think this works. Maybe it does it. I think it takes four damage. <laughs> Hopefully, we're doing this right. Anguish on making would be a good one. I mean, that's the other thing. Rakdos and Orzov traditionally have good removal. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a strong answer there. Also, like, Guilds of Ravnica was a powerful set. It was a... All the guilds had powerful cards. The uncommon cycles of, like, the double color cost, those were really powerful. So I think, based on how powerful guilds of ravnica was which i think is a pretty high power level set i'm expecting that ravnica legions has to be similarly powerful they're not going to push half of the guilds and then give us horrible gruel and orzov and azurius i expect that all those guilds are also going to be pushed just as much as as the guilds were in guilds of ravnica so that's my thinking at least opponent's getting a lot of evasive creatures Ooh, Mortify would be sweet. Mortify, Putrefy. We got Putrefy last go around, right? In uh, Return to Ravnica. So I could see Mortify. Av oh, Avatar of Fury. Okay. And Mortify also pretty good against the flip stuff. Things like Search for Iskanta. That's a nice little upside. I do want to see an XXYY creature cycle cards. Hopefully, RRGG will be some 8-8 Trampler. I could see that. I could see the Gruul one just having absurd stats. I don't know about Trample, but I could see it being just a really huge vanilla creature. Just like, what would it be? How big would it have to be to be threatening? An 8-8 for fours might be too much. Could you do 7-7? Seven, 6-6? Seven, six, six? I would not be surprised. Oh, Godsire. Opponent's going wide. We need something. Opponent, untapping, passing. I think we're very slowly losing to this Ghost of Innocence. Well, make an eight. Come on, bounce cracking. Ooh, hoof daddy. Ugh. Everything's dealing half damage. Oh, my brain. My brain. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one gets through for four. I don't want to think this through. Chat, do the math. Do the math. <laughs> All the damage is halved, rounded down. So this hits for six, this hits for six, this hits for five, this hits for seven, this hits for, actually this can hit for seven. Six, seven, five, seven, six, four. Uh, everything's half because of this ghost of the innocent. Uh, all right, whatever. We're going to swing. I don't know. I almost think that our opponent survives and we lose on the backswing, but this has been the weirdest Momir game, so if <laughs> if it doesn't work out, then okay. 25% of the damage gets through. I don't think we win. And they, oh, man, they also have Razia. Yeah, I don't, I don't think. I don't know. I think we probably... Math is for blockers, but I think we probably just killed ourselves. <laughs> Photo blocks. Blocks. This has been a really weird one. I mean, Momir is a strange format in general, but we had bugs at game one. We had double Amara 
in game one. We had spiny starfish. We had all kinds of craziness. Ha ha! You've activated my morsel hoarder. Still not sure any of this works, but all right. All right, Moto, figure it out. Tell us if we win or lose. I don't know. Razia does things. Oh, wait. Oh. Huh. Wait, we don't want to kill this. I think we did this wrong. Oh my god. This is too complicated. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh my, we won! Huh. Okay. Well, apparently we won easily. I thought, huh. Is that what was supposed to happen? What was supposed to happen? I'm still not sure that was... <laughs> I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I didn't think we had that much damage, but apparently we did. Way to go, math. <laughs> Oh, thank you for the game, Trial 53. It was a blast. And I think that brings us to the end for tonight, boys and girls. So uh, we had the giveaway. Congratulations to the winner of our giveaway tonight, which was Cartman 61616. So congratulations. There will be more in the future. Uh, we will have no stream on Thursday. Just a reminder, it is Thanksgiving here in the U.S., so I won't be around. But we'll be back next Tuesday with more giveaways. In the meantime, reminders, replay YouTube. That's where you can find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube, some sweet against the odds action coming up shortly. Also, the sponsor of tonight's stream is Ridge Wallet, and they make super slim front pocket wallets out of carbon fiber and titanium. You can check them out at RidgeWallet.com, get 10% off with the cold goldfish. And finally, our final reminder, we have a... Yes, I know it's a holiday. I gotta do, I gotta do family turkey stuff. Uh, yes, final reminder, over on the merch page at mdgoldfishmerch.com, if you use the code THANKS20, you can get 20% off from now and th uh, through Cyber Monday, so for the next few days. So keep that in mind if you want a good deal and want to support the stream and the channel and the site. So uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone if you're celebrating it here in the U.S. If not, happy end of November, middle of the week. <laughs> Uh, the vote on Against the Odds goes up with the article. So it'll be going up tomorrow night along with the article for Force Fruition. So thank you so much for hanging out, everyone. You were awesome. Thanks to everyone who donated. Yes, Beard Camp is coming and subscribed and just hung out. You are so sweet, so amazing. And I'm thankful for all of you. That's what I'm thankful for this Thanksgiving. Seriously, y'all are the best and you make it so much fun to hang out and do this. So, oh, uh, El Gr I'm so sorry, the great Currywurst. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you for your subscription. Big soups here for our new subscriber. Thank you, Lockout. All right, so have a wonderful week, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, if that's your thing. If not, have a wonderful week anyway. And yeah, I will see you on Tuesday with another one.